another episode of Cyber Masters with your host Ed Nutella and my extremely special guests Patrick Deegan and Artie Sintef. Looking forward to introducing them in just a moment. Another exciting show. We're going to be talking about the metaverse, what it's going to be like in uh, 2040. It's going to be our main discussion. Uh, we have a couple of civic activists here, and uh, we're going to have an interesting a spin more than on technology. <laughs> They're going to introduce themselves. They're going to tell us the whole history. I'm looking forward to introducing Artie, who has a very interesting background. But um, talking about government, uh, we have some interesting information. We have a barometer of which governments are being pegged as being having the most open gov uh, ability or sharing the data on the best of the ability. The United States is not on the top of that food chain. Um, <laughs> look forward close. to going through that with you guys and having a lively discussion about uh, civics, the metaverse, um, how governments are preparing to share all their data, right? It's a very interesting conversation. Patrick, how are you, sir? Nice to see you again on the show. How are you doing? Please, tell us about yourself. This is your second time on. Yeah, I'm a civic activist. That means, I guess, a professional troublemaker. <laughs> professional troublemaker? Yeah. Okay. This sparks something that I don't normally do, which is on-air appearances or talk to a microphone or ever having a camera. So I'll talk to people like this. I've met these guys over, over years, actually, professionally speaking. So, and I met years ago, which we didn't get into last time, when we were both basically part of a think tank for wow. a round yes. Well, what, what else would you call it? Yes, I guess it was a think tank concept. Okay, yes. I mean, we have to even mention his name, Dr. Ray Naff. Mm, oh, wow. Right? Yes. Oh, man, that's true. That yes. was how many? 15 years ago. That's right, so it's worthy mention on Cybermasters podcast because of who Dr. Ray, Ray was. Dr. Ray Nav, a name I haven't heard in 10 years. That's amazing. Right, and that was when I first oh, met you. Wow. I was coy at the time about who I was. You said, uh, what do you do for a living? And I said something like, I breathe, I eat. And I, <laughs> you know, and you had like no idea, but you re realized who was in the room. So in the room at the time was uh, an ambassador, a uh, representatives for a foreign corporation. And what the think tank was based off of was being able to set up wireless communications in an emerging third world country. Oh my gosh, I remember this. And it was hostile territory, which a uh, coup had taken over, and that's what installed the new heads. That's when we first met when we were talking about that project. Yeah. We were going to put wireless technology in, in sections of South Africa, I believe. It was Liberia. In, in, in Liberia. I mean, they're, okay. they're friends, you know, they, we yes. all got along, but it yes. was through, I believe it was Terence, who was the ambassador for Trinidad. Wow, wow. And he knew their ambassador something, and it was a technology that was available. At the time, you guys had uh, the contract with Glen Cove, so you had done the entire city of Glen Cove. Why? Wireless, yes, basically. Yes, that was a long time ago. So I just want to, um, a good friend of mine who owned Nexcon Wireless 20 years ago, who passed away, um, was driving a lot of these deals. And yes, I yeah. had quite a bit of people through our friend Don Bonifazio and, and, uh, and, Wayne. and, and Wayne, that's who, brought who me both in. Uh, passed Wayne, away in, Wayne in, the, Foreman in, the, in the Foreman the on tragic accident not far from July 12th, 2006. That's pretty scary. I, I remember that. ready for this. It was uh, June 11th. It was June 11th? Yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't the 12th. So I right. grew up with him. Uh, it was uh, as an homage to Wayne, it's necessary to say his mother uh, came down to me on the day of the accident and found out he was in the hospital. Uh, after that incident happened where our two close friends and I uh, divided a whole bunch of people, even professionally speaking. But what brought me into that was uh, my friend used to actually, his, his claim to fame was he was a networker extraordinaire in his own right. Uh, his background was he was even on MTV's The Grind and one of the original dancers. Oh, wow. So he goes back, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's yeah. the connection was I was brought in on this because I also knew Terrence because get this ambassador is actually entertain oh, internationally so okay. I had a background from entertainment before I got into the activism yes so it already gave me that knowledge of politics I had the the personal background of the tech from music production which I sure. also know you do yes yes well we wrote some stuff together we were doing tech stuff together yeah even though so that interesting so the lead song from was from a collab of oh, yeah, yeah spice yeah. it up spice it up <laughs> <laughs> but but that's interesting so you took your uh, you know your entertainment 
um, dealings and you brought that forward and yeah. some of those people. Personal knowledge and, and as you know with knowledge. business and networking it's all. And these were, these were fairly large leaders we were dealing with at the time. To, well, to intimidating. Let's mm -hmm. let's say, yeah. I mean, in terms <laughs> yeah. of like what it was, it was a the well, a well, foreign government. Yeah, I think the idea was to go up into log large towers, thirty or fifty feet up in the air, and have security with each engineer to avoid being shot down with an AK-47. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> so, and they were going to live on a hovercraft. <laughs> Doctor Ray ocean. was brought in because uh, <laughs> Doctor Ray. We can say this, but Doctor Ray's background was that I recall was. CIA, part of the uh, initial artificial intelligence program. Oh man, in the yes. 60s. Oh wow. And then yes. he went on, he was a professor at Hofstra University. But in terms of technology, at least 15 years ago, it's he been was so doing long. an online class where he was a professor to somewhere in mainland China. That's really cool. Yeah. And I don't remember what the courses were, but he was just, at the time that we had met him, he was considered the top grant writer in the state. Yes, correct. So when I said think tank, it was, in, it was extreme. So you've got a, a diplomat who's represented foreign countries, multiple because of his nationalities, his background. Ed's knowledge was completely tech from what I recall. Yes, yes. We found out like the music side of it. Um, that branched me into all these other things where when I got out of entertainment, because not to be rude, but it got boring. Yeah, really, really. Well, yeah, after I started doing events, I was boring. an agent. Yeah. Did PR, did marketing, did the networking side. So it's mm -hmm. like... It's interesting how I came to that. So I was CIO for a n international uh, company that was doing displays and computers uh, rentals, and I had just joined Donnie's company, and we started talking about that project. Right. And then he passed away, and Wayne four months later, and the whole project went went uh, sideways. You know. Yeah. Uh, another thing and that Ray I was doing was uh, too. I was sick. doing like the R and D side of it for them about potential outlets and that's when they got into the you're gonna like this an MTA contract <laughs> for uh, the platforms in New York City mm -hmm. yes it was an open bid if I recall they didn't, didn't get it and the yes. last thing that we were doing was uh, <laughs> Katrina okay I remember we this. were trying to set something up Donnie mm -hmm. was even gonna bankroll the whole thing to be able to send wireless Infrastructure, infrastructure down there. To Katrina after. It was like, yup, and it was within days, and uh, I don't remember exactly what had happened because. Uh, yeah, he had passed. <coughs> he had passed. Please, Artie, um, tell us about yourself, and <coughs> I have so many questions for who you, for what you do, and who you are. Oh, how you Please. doing? First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for coming here. I got to thank this guy, Patrick. I met this guy what two years ago now? I have no idea. Probably about two years ago, I was vice chair. By the way, stop. Time is relative. There's a new yes. study that was just out. So <laughs> I, I don't have to know what time it is. A few years ago. <laughs> years, <laughs> according to his knowledge, and I'm going to go with it. I was a uh, vice chair of... I'll uh, that in court. That, that's what he said. <laughs> vice chair of the Suffolk County Community, uh, Suffolk County Libertarian Party. Suffolk County Libertarian Party. party. Uh, Wait, what is a Libertarian Party? Uh, we are vice chair or you chair? I was vice chair at the time. Oh, at the time we met. Yeah. What is the Libertarian Party uh, We are the third largest party in the United States. Or so third Democrats, party. Republicans? And We're uh, very middle ground. Um, I mean, the simplistic form, I hate to say it, I hate using the term, is uh, socially liberal, uh, you know, economically conservative, but that's very, very basic terms. Yeah, and we're constitutionalist. Constitutionalist, yeah, right. so your body. Whatever he said, and then they're also constitutionalist. Yeah. They're interesting groups. We should be able to make choices of our own body, not the government. Interesting. Okay. It's a lot and more freedom. The ideas of the libertarian party. Pretty much. To, to to choose for on your own instead yeah. of big government. We know better about our own body than the government does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can do better for the public than the government does. Volunteerism, uh, instead of you know government funding and government groups, we can do a better job. What made you decide to get involved? College. Uh, <laughs> I was a libertarian huh. in college. You, you know, back to uh, uh, 1999. Where'd you go? Uh, I went to Suffolk and Briarcliff locally in Long Island here, and uh, introduced to it. Started to get involved like little things, and I stayed on the outside of the party for years. And uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I got involved mm -hmm. and uh, became vice chair. Met Patrick, and uh, he brought me into a little more local stuff, which had been great. Uh, town issues, uh, environmental issues, and things we've been fighting. Does and the Suffolk County Libertarian Party do more national things? Is that well, what its goal? The no, party. Or more local work? We just deal uh, with the county work. Here? Yeah. Oh wow! I got the mills. Please, please. Wow, I get to interrupt. I so here's the interruption. You can on interrupt this. any time. Please. National yeah. politics meddles into everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. It trickles okay. down. It trickles okay? down. As yeah. much yeah. money as there is, it's going to filter that far. That's the networking and PR and logo branding of it. Got it you've got, got it. Coke, you've got Pepsi. You know, tastes great, less filling. <laughs> Blind okay. taste test says four to five dollars <laughs> a grade. And then they market that for the politicians. Got it. In other okay. words, real doesn't sell as well 
for them in terms of their returns and popularity. And getting votes through. Yeah, you only need to brand point. four or five points. You get four or five points on a flyer. I'm running for this. Three is good. Now it's just vague notions. Really, really. So uh, most so politicians bad. will run on three to four bullet points? It, it, primary items? They used to run on more, but now they don't really have they to. Focus. In a larger office, you do have to. You might have to, in, in actually more words, mm -hmm. put which a platform is so your constituents are going to vote yeah. for you or, and believe you. Well, what they've but done, instead of putting this paper smaller, it's still the same paper, this huge font of those four bullet points. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. <laughs> and then vague wording and description, but mm -hmm. uh, stock photos. Got it, got you know, oh, a yeah. kid being pushed in a swing, or somebody at the beach <laughs> at the water. Some right. family, family. Oh, you know, it's it's it's, so what is the, it, it's party the person doing? with their sleeves rolled up, sitting there, you know, at the diner with the old people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Looking concerned. And he's got no tie on. You know what I mean? And then he's on at a parade, and he's waving, and everybody loves him. You know, and then there's the, the, the family photo with the beach, you know, maybe pushing the kid at the swing. Look, I know how to throw a ball with my kid. And we don't even know Imagine if Imagine a politician kid. can't even throw the baseball. <coughs> and and, and the advertising game. marketing side is it doesn't have to be their kid. Nobody no. asks anymore. It doesn't so have It's a random kid they found the parking. <laughs> no, it could be, yeah, yeah. You, you know, there could have been a behind-the-scenes casting who's going to play the, the part of Senator so-and-so. Yep. Okay. Pretty much. So, so how does the Libertarian that Party compare to that? has... They never, they never bother to engage in that, if that makes sense. No. They always stay true to their core. So what wound up happening is uh. with the two-party system going into that visceral race, they've lost people to the wayside mm. that are even too radical for that party. Oh, they've entered into the fray of the left and the right. Mm. So they view the third party as not going and creating their own party. They view it as infiltrating something else. So God. he is a county chair. What I'm seeing is he's got to deal with some national nonsense, and yeah. I'm as a county chair and with what's going on nationally, it's almost like because of the politics of it, he would have to watch what he says. Because anything he say can and will be used against Because it is on a national level. Because it level. can. I mean, that sound bite, that talking point, it is golden for, for cutting up and repeating. Got it, got it. I mean, I ripped apart people today on so live and Stony Brook. And Sean, if you're out there, ha call me, dude. I'll, I'll, have, I'll be on your show. I mean, come on, dude. I can do this. <laughs> So, so no, I mean it's no. simple. So, so you're really ultimately saying that um, as a libertarian, you're not engaging in those in those items, and you're doing more local work. Okay. But all that local stuff is used for the larger national for reasons, the larger goal. The yeah, larger goal. Hundred percent. Which is to make an impact of this third party of having more penetration yes. in the United States. Yep. Yeah. So. What percentage? It would be a third party in this. In other words, it's a two-party war. So yes, no yeah. third party. It would be a third option. You know what I mean? Yeah, which isn't yeah. that. And it's I, I like the third option. People want the third. We need option. more options. But wasn't it called the independent? There party? is an independent party. Oh, okay. Yeah, a different There's party. a conservative a party. party. There's a bunch of different parties. Yeah. So the libertarians and the independents are different. Yes. Why don't yeah. they join up and mix their guys? Well, there are a, people. You have to understand it. Independent mm. voter isn't necessarily, but there's an independent party. So an independent is like a different word. So that's God. it's not a play on words exactly, but like you, they have to register the name as an independent. That's when you have like these uh, these offshoot parties mm -hmm. or what, what's the lines mm -hmm. called? You'd know this um, ballot line or ballot item ballot line. Oh God, my words don't work. Okay. When they create a party off of a petition, but it's not any of the known established the in parties. The independent party petition, the designated petition. No, like. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to mention it, but the last one I saw. I'm okay. sorry, Gene. I really am. Like <laughs> stop LIBA. Yeah, those are all LIBA. independent. Uh, they're independent parties. Okay, they're just another form. Of yeah, basically, form. I could run for office next year under uh, United Network Associates Party. Oh, got it. If I have enough signatures and that's the name on the top of the sheet, that's my party. Now, now wasn't there <laughs> that situation years ago with everybody running for governor? And there was a, a rent this too damn high party. <laughs> yes. Yep. He was that right. guy was right. funny. Yes. Yeah. Was funny, yeah. I, I couldn't remember any of the names. There's yep. been a bunch of them over the years. Right. Yep. Right. But uh, um, wow, I could think of a, a bunch of different party names to come up with. <laughs> How come there that. isn't the advancement of technology party? How come no one's? You had it? asked that last time, and he asked yeah. it on the show. He said, "What's the party of technology?" And there is one. I said. That's what I said. I'm sorry. You There's want to talk no blockchain? Party? Libertarians are huge on it, but really? th that's all they care about. I said blockchain. they use um, technology. Yeah, they don't they're not promote. They're not pushing new stuff. Every once in a while, like a lobbyist, they'll get into some Congress people and they'll push something forward. Like we saw that with five G. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's the five G. I don't even know if we can say the words now because of how many FCC restrictions there are. You know, <laughs> I know you can't talk about the health. Mm -hmm. You can't even mention it if you're an elected public official. If it comes up in a debate, yep. uh, there's. 
bargaining points that you can't even negotiate where they set a price point i believe it's like well uh excuse me <laughs> well well i think that you need faster cellular technology it's something good um uh, granted it's probably early stages and uh general testing on humanity is i gotta interrupt you on your own show. yeah please i have I like it i like worst days ever yeah. so your people are tech minded right yes I have two different devices operating on two different networks. Okay. Even trying to get in here today, trying to get a solid signal at mm -hmm. all, trying to maintain a data connection when you need it most, yes. it doesn't work. Mm. So we were having this con conversation a while ago yes. about like saturation or whatever is going on, but technology is great, especially improvements and advancements, but I'm not seeing the advancements anymore. Mm. Okay. I'm seeing wider screens, I'm seeing more. It's stagnant though. It's not really gigabyte, but in terms of connectivity, I feel we're 20 years ago, which is frightening. We're fo we're behind the eight. I mean, even whether it's cable or you know FiOS, yeah. it's like yeah. well, if the wind blows or if it's sunspots or if there's some other atmospheric condition or whatever yeah. else we're experiencing. Uh, absolutely. So so internet is is spotty, cellular is spotty, and our dependency is just growing on all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's. I mean, I don't, you're paying through the nose. So, like, I mean, think about I'll, it. I'll segue for you into your show like the type like cybersecurity. Yeah. We don't we can't even access the internet at times and then we pay for an upgrade but it's like and it might be there but it's a, a tech related where it's market driven where it might be outdated by the time we get it. I also think we're noticing it a lot more. In my opinion internet's gone very got significantly more stable than 10 years ago. It's just our extreme dependency on it. A small blip for an hour or two Will 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 be a national news where a few years ago it was just sort of accepted, but well, you're 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 noticing downtime so much more with the technology today. Is that yeah. what you're saying? It's almost like a, in terms of like saturation, it's content. There's yes. so much. There's like, so much need on it that even down for five minutes. Oh my god! Treat the cloud you like you it's endless. It. Yeah. And it's not endless. Yeah. It has to be created yeah. to be in. <laughs> I wasn't wa uh, checking email constantly or always on social media. So if the internet went down for a little bit, it, it wasn't the end of the world. But now it's a critical piece. It's become well, critical yeah. to everyone. If it went down, look at all the industry it would affect too, because not just in terms of operation, but employment. Yeah, yeah. employment. And, and look, I mean, most uh, copper phone lines are gone. Everyone's on line with with uh, talking on on some kind of internet ISP kind of thing. So Never analog's going on. away, man. Yeah. It's completely dependent on this stuff, you know. Um, let me jump into a little bit of us. Uh, uh, Tech news here, which is very interesting. Um, actually, let me start with uh, with our cyber news, uh, which talks about the hardening of water supply uh, here in the United States. Uh, let me let me get that going properly. Here, just one second, and uh, here we go. The administration wants to prevent an attack on water supply. Um, pretty important uh, information there. They've finally, they've finally woke up in January of 2022 and said, wait a minute, it's probably not a good idea that these water uh, supply areas are, are not uh, fully secured. Um, from what I know, water supply, water companies are pseudo-government and may not have the best technology on a national level. Any comments on that? I know in terms of like operation of facilities, they're trying to upgrade always just in terms of what they need. So tech, I have no idea where they're at. I know you might be a little bit on the operation side. Well, the probably you look at it, the government, the government's always a little behind on like that type of government side where the private industry is going to push forward. Yes. Where the private industry would be a better bet to handle this over the government right now. So you believe if water plants are bought by pri or privatized, there's a better chance for security? Yeah, definitely. Really? So that happened here in, in, the, in, in Long Island, New York, where it was privatized. So in your opinion, there's a uh, better security sense with that privatization? Yes. Government's always slow with their contracts, taking a while, the lowest bidder. You deal with any type of contract, they always, always go lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. And certain government and courts, the technology that they're using is still XP in some cases. Yeah. Right, really, so it's still Windows XP. Um, I expect this is to see arcade machines in the hallways. <laughs> so, so Patrick and I have talked about it. You can't use a small example, but here is the federal government using what happened in Florida, in Old Smart Florida, yep. where a hacker briefly was able to alter the chemicals going into the water, 
and they caught it and they said, well, wait a minute, all these water plants are, are, are vulnerable, we should do something about it. Yeah, that line is, is great. The, a warning shot came last year when a hacker briefly raised the amount of lye in the water system. It, what, what other controls could he have affected? You know, how far does it go? And, and who says it was the first time <coughs> he did it? We've heard for a long time that we could, our grid could be compromised and we've been threatened as much internationally, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So, so here's uh, Washington Post talking about these, uh, these significant issues that are being discovered now. My concern is it, it had been vulnerable for years beforehand. Now they're catching it. What happened between when it became vulnerable and this discovery to what's happening in these water issues? Is it possible? Testing did not happen currently. Correctly. Oh yeah, I mean the testing could be compromised, but also like fail-safe switches, like what happened with Stuxnet. Mm -hmm. Like how much reliance is there on the data that's you know laboratory-driven mm -hmm. or analysis-driven? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it's not that I don't trust the computer, but in terms of a hack, that's exactly what Stuxnet was. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine, just ignore it. Well, let's take a look. They have some ideas of how to fix it all. Here's the plan. They call it. Uh, they're going to outfit water utilities with systems that alert about possible cyber activity, targeting the industrial control systems that manage pumps, purification, and other processes. Why now? Why not 10 years ago? I, in terms of government, that they might not have been on their radar. It probably wasn't something they even cared about. Or, or had the ability. Or, I mean, ability. Cyber dealing, security got big it, in 2012. Well, the government what are they is, dealing with? Like he said, some, I mean, it's basically if you're dealing with antiquated tech, you know, in terms of cybersecurity or vulnerability, mm. think about it. Like if you're if you're if you're a government employee and you're trying to secure the national water, and you're, you're being given like a, you know what I'm saying? Commodore 64. To yeah. use. <laughs> I don't even know, but I, I know in courts I've seen like the XP, yeah. and it's like that's what they gave you. And they're still using XP in some of these places, yes. and that's shameful. Number and what two. are they hooked up to? Uh, who knows? They if better not be hooked up to anything. <laughs> right, right. So, so, other than interest. So what Patrick is talking about is fully air gap systems. We agree that these uh, water pumps, these systems, should not in any way be on the network. But to simplify the IT guy's work, he'll put that machine somehow on the network a just a little bit. Just so he can update it remotely and not have to <laughs> sit in front of every machine. Well, you can get in. Bam. I mean. Done. And they're all in terms issues. of international security, you, they don't even need to. They don't even need to go that far, right? They don't even need yeah. to be there, so to speak, or get inside. There's Correct. another way. So, if, if we're going to be really serious about cybersecurity and vulnerabilities with well, well, yeah. certain, I mean, imagine them turning off the Hoover Dam or just well, we hope that flooding the Hoover something. Dam it's is like a better example it, it, in terms of modern warfare. I mean, cybersecurity is what yeah. you can wreak havoc with. The millions and millions that would, and the millions of lives that would be affected. I mean, I don't even want to think about it because it's almost doomsday. It would be like Armageddon, but it can be done because of our... Well, it happened in Florida here, and they caught it after a few minutes. Your doomsday was about to have that effect. Yeah. My question is, did it happen before? We're just talking about now because it was really yeah. bad this time. But any hacker you know always tests the water. Always tests the water. They're always in a few times before, before they hit the Right, right. He was, he He's was, been inside, played around. He was a bad 100%. actor hanging out before he made attacks. He was in there before. Well, do they even know when they say hacker, I mean in terms of military, you, if you can, that's common sense. Well, they sense. don't even know if it was a, a foreign... Yeah, was a kid. Was it a random kid? They destroy the water supply. Like, do you understand? The only yeah. expression of like an army only goes as marches mm -hmm. on its bellies. Like, yeah. you understand? They like, what water would be to sure. destabilize the water? I think me and all and then we would of like everybody here would be dependent on some kind of importation. Yes. Of water. I believe the audience, including That's, uh, and uh, there was would movies agree about that. Hundred percent. That 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 like, much like the last Mad Max movie, <laughs> you really need the water, right? If you've seen that movie. Number two, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Cybersecurity <laughs> Infrastructure Security Agency, we've been talking a lot about those guys, the CISA group, will surge efforts to share information with utilities about cyber threats they should be protected against. Finally, they're going to share information with other people. Now, I've been in shared uh, conversations with this for years. <coughs> it's very difficult to draw people to the table like that. Everyone has separate networks, separate IT guys. Not everybody necessarily agrees. 
And lastly, it start with a pilot focused on water systems that serve the largest population, such as those located in big cities. It's 2022. We've been talking about cyber attacks since 2012, taking down government. Yeah, not only that, but starting a pilot on large <laughs> cities. I mean, the pilot is a Jesus. startup type thing. You don't start with the biggest for your for your. This is coming out of the uh, Washington Post of what our president is now taking very seriously. Here, part of this article talks about, with that in mind, the Biden administration will launch a voluntary new cybersecurity initiative aimed at preventing hackers from contaminating or blocking access to drinking water and wastewater systems. Don't worry about it. The EPA is involved. We're all safe. Nice. <laughs> now, now we're good. Now we're good. They can't they can well, protect themselves. expand on that because that sounds too sarcastic. I just it was. Learn this. Well, when they created like 1970 and it was all industry insiders because they were the guys with the know-how of what the chemicals were that yep. they had created. Can you talk about that? What's that really? They allowed an industry what, to when, have what, oversight of itself. I think it was 70 or 70. 73, 72, yeah. And what was 70. the agency that was created? The EPA. The EPA yeah. from experts who knew the chemicals. Uh, DuPont, all these big companies DuPont. were on the creation of the board, and yeah. What, perfect group? Of course, when they're exactly. signing off legislation for okay, their own. They, because it was such, I think this is something like it was such an, a, like a, an exact science, like nuclear physics, only the experts mm -hmm. knew, and they didn't have common experts yeah. like that in the, the regular world that they could apply. Mm. So so they brought in now the businesses. The business insiders. That. So, interesting, interesting. So, but it's public information that the EPA was originally formed by people who had industry knowledge to yes. this degree. Yeah. And, and they no also government. done a lot of good over time. It's just the, they didn't go as far with it. Does that make sense? Well, there's certainly the technology they brought they don't us. they test for or there's uh, the, the products and they levels brought us that they're willing us. to let us be subjected to because mm -hmm. after, they'll say something like, you know, I will take 70 years before you develop really <laughs> weird illnesses. <laughs> You'll be dead by then. It's fine. You know. Yeah, like, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, <laughs> that, that, like that's other science fiction movies. It's like that's how long until we get into mutation then? Yeah, well, I mean, I how long before seatbelts uh, came around? And you know, I guess it took ten, twenty years of hacking their brains off before the administration goes. Maybe we ought to start a pilot program. I think it's time, guys. Right? Yeah, yeah, for all of California. <laughs> all of California. You know I mean? <laughs> the highest population. Not so much. Not so much like, like Iowa or something. Let's, Let's test it out there. You know? Test it out there. And if it rolls out there, then we'll let. Like. <laughs> I think those guys are fine. Exactly. Um, well, the next piece of uh, our tech news uh, should be quite interesting here. Let me transition into it. It is the barometer. <laughs> Of um, of countries that have open data systems, very very <laughs> interesting. This is called the Open Data Barometer uh, Company, and this is like like a prank right now. <laughs> so both so have background and activity in politics and what hold on saying. guys, hold on. <laughs> all right, okay. all right, it gets worse. So we are we are professionals and we understand yeah, how watch. this works. It's very important to understand what they're doing here. The World Wide Web Foundation and the Open Data Barometer Organization has made this thing to tell you which country has the most uh, open data that they're sharing with the public and people to be able to do mm. research. Okay? And they have a color. They have a, even have a map color of the world. Map. By the way, who, it, Sick is watch. That, you know? That's like so you can color in like North look, America. I can, I can look at that. Look at that. That goes yellow. Suffolk County. And it, it starts to. Uh, I heard like your Asia would that be your Russia? Take a look at that's Canada. There. Your Russia, China. Let's take <laughs> a look at there. Uh, Indo. There's something. There. No, no, no. You can highlight that guy somewhere. Well, let's look at the chart below. No, no. You said open data countries, right? But what open we're looking data. at is is it's not countries. Watch what we're looking at here. The, you got to point this out. This isn't countries, right? Country. <laughs> explain because I don't even know if, who knows this. They're but sectioning this off in weird ways. These are places of like if you ever see like where. Like locations that activity comes into and out of, because like almost like call them host countries now for internet use. Okay. Mm -hmm. North America, this region, you know what I mean? Got it. That, but that's it's not what it closely represents is yeah, what in is terms China, of anything. I mean, you have to check together. out, but well, where do the hacks come from? Uh, other than yes. up here, right? Yes. But yes. they mostly come, okay. And what's a big target? The green one. The green one's a big target. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. <laughs> and then and then a lot of them bounce from here to South America and 
So let's take a or look they'll at that. originate so here, you know, or they're coming out of India, and mm -hmm. you know the map. So, so this barometer, they, the war games map, uses a hundred as the best score. Uh, red being not so good, green being some of the better, hundred being the best. So let's take a look at our little barometer reading that they are mentioning here. Look at that Canada score of seventy six. Hmm, what what does that actually mean there? How's Canada winning at this? The score changed too. 18, where the UK is only look at down Look at the way so they're what measuring what this, guys. Do? Let me pull this up Upgraded for a second here. From XP look to, at this uh, dashboard. Millennium. <laughs> look at this <laughs> lovely, <laughs> interesting dashboard they've created here. So our first item, let's take a look at that. Um, does the data exist? <laughs> well, does the data exist? Map data. It's hard to be open if you don't have data to be open. They have about. a green light. <laughs> well, let's let's see what they're, they're lacking in, though. Like they have a green light. Categories. What's the second one real quick? That's, uh, is the data openly located? That's the yes, conversation yes. you're sort of even getting at. Um, like, open data. I mean, land if it is, data. Like, we, let's see what I, they I've scored for on here. Know let's you know. take a look at that Locating guy. open data mm -hmm. and government sources. So Canada did not do so well on detailed government budget data. But no. their government action is 99 Point zero zero. So right. So, but they're not. Government they're policies not are seventy-eight. You very know, it averages on that, out on that information. So that's there. what they did. Their government action put them, I guess, through the roof. They must have done some policy change and scored well Possibly. with this. Legislation. They get a poor score on the legislation. Um, yeah, you saw that eighteen point change though. So something happened. Went up eighteen points. Speaking, where something they shot up, where the UK, which has been around for a while, is, is was uh, down four. Health sector performance. They're getting a no low score on that. Why would Canada be getting a low score on health uh, health information, health performance? It's on a lot data? Of data. Yeah, it's a ton yeah, of data. I mean, it's just a, but look, other countries. Uh, yeah, let's see how other countries perform on that. National information statistics, they scored low on that as well. Look at that. Do you realize how big the, the medical files are? Yeah. Look, I mean, that's well, huge. Let's, let's take a look at some of the other data there. I, is it available online from government in any form? So they get perfect score across the board there, right? Is the data set provided in machine uh, readable and reusable formats instead of, you know, just plain PDFs or whatever? They score very high on that. Um, is the machine... Uh, readable and reusable data available as a whole. Well, that's very good. They score well in that. I'd like to see that information. Um, Patrick and I have looked at government data that say open data, and then you need a scientist from overseas to put it together, right? So let's see what open <laughs> data <laughs> really actually means. Is the data openly licensed? Look at that. There's a licensing question. They're scoring low wow, on some of that. that that's brutal. Um, is the data set being kept regularly updated? There's a couple of failures on that. Was it easy to find the information? Quite a bit of red marks on that. And are data uh, identifiers provided the key elements in the data set? Let's talk about that. What a key item. Is there a person identified for this data? If, if, if you're dealing with modern data management and compliance they want you to segment data sets your sales data is one form your accounting data and you begin to classify your data and hopefully separate it right which is the whole goal of identifying it but they are now asking is there somebody who is in charge of that data set some in charge of the mapping data some in charge of that you're going to see a lot of governments kind of falling down on that. Oh, yeah. This data steward concept where you've segmented data and now you're responsible for that set is still in its infancy. Patrick? I'm just noticing that they got a 3 out of 15 on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's or 3 out of 18. That's I bad. I apologize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, like, statistics and reporting, you pulled this out because it's the top of the chart. And yes, sir. Correct. It's almost like, correct. not that it's manipulated, but it's almost like you can work on certain key components to Within boost your ratings and actually accomplish nothing. Yes, yes, I'll buy that. Just I mean, that's, uh, this is what I, I saw was improve your score. The, the, yeah, the improvement r numbers. It's like... We well, let's see, let's see how we the United States... Where's the United States, the United change. States there? Let's uh, do a little United States. And is this compared annually or... Uh, yes, record. these are annual statistics. We um, dropped 11 points there. I, I, I recommend we dig a little deeper and look at uh, how this website... Here's a good one, though. The, the, the column readiness is... Mm -hmm. 
And then the emerging impact, that's probably most relevant to us in terms of this, which is, I'm not even going to look at it because we're, we're not the worst, but we are nowhere near where we need to be. No. Korea and Mexico are, have emerging impacts. Wow. Yeah, Unless that's the emerging impacts that are affecting them. Or well, let me uh, click this on is the readiness, United States, right? which is very interesting here. Let me try again. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, all right, here's the United States. Ooh, you're not going to like these red marks. And we scored lower than Canada. Let's take a look at our Gee, Why am I not surprised? Here. Um, somehow, does data exist scored green across the board? I got to tell you, that particular item on this website, that in the United States they get a green mark that all the data exists, I, I'm it's, sorry. It's just wrong. Completely wrong. There's, there's no way. Patrick? I'm looking at the top. Are these self-explanatory symbols? Like, yes, is this they are. And wireless? You know, like, so we have wireless, but we don't have whatever else the first three um, or four they're, are. They're, they're interesting symbols for I map mean, data. The, the, the justice symbol, the if justice you will. Symbol. The justice symbol. The scale. I, everybody has that. Legislation. You know? That's legislation. Legislation. Okay, that's simple enough. It's you just know? the rollout. But how's our map data in green when half the stuff you go in the GIS maps and open data shows no information? Listen, I was just on it yesterday. We Suffolk were, County GIS. Hold on, because that's <laughs> the experiment he and I did. Three days ago, we jumped on. I'm like, look, open data. And then we found some databases. But then you had to cross-reference everything. It wasn't PDFs, but the cross-referencing seemed impossible. And it went nowhere. It went nowhere. No. Yes. You know? Yeah, let's do this for a second. So it's like, what the heck, you know? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Right. Okay. According to Boston College Libraries, here's my answer from April 2017. Shouldn't have According an answer. According to the Poetry as as Foundation, a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck. That's the Poetry a Foundation. Chuck chuck but it gets better. Researchers at Cornell determined that a woodchuck could chuck about 700 pounds. <laughs> Researchers at Cornell, this is what they were doing? Now, <laughs> that, that uh, seems like a watch this one. Long Island Groundwater <laughs> Study. Let's see what year this is. Well, the most referen the, the the most recent reference is USGS.gov, and that's from 2018. Mm. 2017. That's sad. That's some old. Here's game. a Long Island Groundwater Sustainability Study from the DEC, which is 2016, which like, it looks like they published in 2021, mm. or was a report through that time. I don't know, but another groundwater study. So certain things are like are hard to find. <laughs> as as people who are aware with how things work in there, I'm sorry. Does data exist? I I don't know. I don't know how they got green marks across. I don't agree with that. I'm I mean, the sorry. idea of open data. You're talking like about the United States government, believe it or not. We are people who understand that they're working in paper files. They're working right. in, in, in regular, like, text files, access databases at best, and have factions of humans... Who are only there to move paperwork and fill out fields on the spreadsheet? Do you ever talk? That about is their job. Your knowledge base of this is that. No, no, I haven't. I just, I just, I think that people oh. need to I don't recognize think it that they think because it's they think the government is very sophisticated. Meanwhile, you're, you know, uh, you probably have more technology in your home than most of these departments have in but, their office. But in the tech side, yeah. you've even seen it because people that you service, contracts that you've had, you've had to go in and you've probably seen like. What, what he's working with at times, you know, is like you've gone in and you've upgraded people. You've brought them to the, yeah. to oh, say this, you brought them to the 20th I'll century, not the 21st well, century, but got, at least got, got them out of, of so, his head. So, as a state about? worker, I know I, the libertarians hate that, the way, but I am a state worker, I work for the MTA. Um, I just did a pilot program for the MTA last year for Windows 10. Yes. A beta program for Windows 10. We finally hit Windows 10 for Windows XP. Yes, yes. Uh, but that was a beta program. But, 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 but you're not unique, and you're not giving out any and secrets. And whistleblower protection, he didn't really whistleblow, but no, he no, it's fired not now because of, so don't even try it. No. Not even that. It's not even that. It's the <laughs> point is they have this is ways how we get around that. You have to talk about these but, things, but, you know what I mean? Because people don't know this. Like, yeah. that's that's... And in terms of what he knows and what they do, and even in terms of cybersecurity, it's like, wait, so we're going to put our wastewater treatment plant onto this? Yes. No wonder it's being hacked by, like, it could be a 16-year-old in Kansas at this point. That's so, what has me frightened with what they're doing. Hey, let me ask you a question. Hold on, here, and here's a statistic saying that all the data exists. They're wrong. We know it doesn't exist. And they're just now starting water treatment, cybersecurity treatment? Like, are you serious? This yeah. is not a brand new problem. Hey, I put your company in charge of this, of, of a water treatment plant over the government. Who's going to do a better job? 
I will, but definitely. But you got to understand, so I spent eight years in government. They want nothing to do with me. Nothing. Well, he I was as a, quite productive. In terms kind of, of that, he end. can't fail or he'd lose the contract. Aside from the like moral or ethical yeah. obligation, yeah. to them it's almost like a military operation. It's acceptable yes. loss, you know. Acceptable loss. Most yes. people won't die from doing this activity or eating that or drinking yeah. that or. It's only water. It, it's you know whatever it is. It's like you know. So what does company register? Just a little Teflon, you know. The company so, register. So so their 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 uh, company register. They are saying they exist. Um, it is not available online for government in any form, meaning that if you wanted company or vendor information, you'd have to foil it. Can you describe the Could foil process? Could you do process? that, though, with a third-party contracts even? Or I believe be you can foil for because subcontractors. It's government contracts so subcontracts. You can foil be... freedom of information law. You guys want to talk yeah, about that? I got a little story on this one. Please. So Please. Uh, recently we foiled a little issue we're going on in uh, Huntington Town. So I foiled on June 6th. Uh, they got back to me a couple of days later and sent me a bunch of stuff. Yeah, you did it. It's not just you. As a, you did it. So, so they, they got you I did it officially as an organization of right. the Suffolk County Libertarian Party. You did an official foil, a foil request. <laughs> on all on this one property they're official looking to build on. I was the chair of the Libertarian Party. Yeah. So the county was requesting because of constituency. Gotcha. Theory. I got and nothing. The on this, just a freedom of information yeah. law. Nothing the most simple thing, you know? So, so what happened? So they I got the most... A load of crap you'll possibly send to me anybody <laughs> they could have denied them like there's all these four these yeah. check marks i saw that they could have but do they feel they gave you something they gave so this is where it gets better they they think they did they sent me crap from five years ago six years ago that we've already dealt with that patrick dealt with in the original fight this has been going on for 20 so, years for yeah people. so randomly it's funny patrick it's used funny. his connections put a little thing in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and happened to get some data that was posted before I foiled. How did that happen? So after he was denied, <laughs> after he was denied, I then requested the information. Was given you some data, well. which was uh, so not what we needed, but what had already been pulled. And then I was it a mistake? It's complicated, no, you know. No. Listen, as I explained, there's lots of moving parts. You know what I mean? Okay. It was a mistake. And if you don't have, did you request you, you different information? Up, I think, it is. I, did you request I think the only mistake was sending that data to Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let me ask you, did you foil it? Did you ask for the same foil? Mm -hmm. You got different... On the know. same tax property. Is it, what's the chances it was... Tony, I'm planning. Dude, call me back. It's been like a week now. I mean, seriously, it's yeah. getting what's, funny, What's the it? chances it was a mistake? None. They didn't want to get the information chances out. Chances it was a mistake. I mean, well... No, it could be a mistake, justifiably. You know what I mean? If, it, if it's... So open I mean, data. justifiably, like if it's not... I don't want to say names, but let's say it's like XYZ... And you, s it's X Y Z, but they've now changed to X Y Z, Inc. instead of LLC. And yes. you ask for X Y yes. Z, LLC. Yes. You've got the wrong company. Uh, it's the wrong application. <laughs> but when you put a tax code, Legally, you have a tax ID number yeah, on yeah. that property. That should have covered everything. Hmm. Okay. Okay. It's just so. Was hmm. it done intentional? It's like, or it's incompetence. It's like, which is worse? Mm. Well, I think or is the it public corruption, you know? I believe the, 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 the public believes that local government and the federal and state government are, are wonderful data <laughs> Sure. Who do you think thinks that, though? I, I, I believe, I, in my opinion, I've talked to the average public, and um, one of my friends once told me, oh, I hope you guys aren't keeping what I'm doing on the Internet. I'm like, so, you're a guy sitting in Smithtown. <laughs> no one cares what you're doing on the Internet, dude. Well, in terms of how many attacks come in and how much is awarded, yeah, we're we're doing good, but we're doing good. We, we had <laughs> well, I I believe like the idea of a switch, like that's the threat. Somebody could go. But hold on, I, I mean, mean, we've not when like, you, when they get full requests for me, I had to have I gotta ask you this: your person give me access database. Who is going to be providing this cybersecurity? Is it the private sector? Because other Oops. countries have. Devoted military wings to cyber warfare. We yes. even have a branch of cyber military. Yes, I believe there's a lot of so companies. So when you're dealing rich. with this, like, it has to be done right because it's so crucial to to survival in the country. Mm. I mean, in terms of vulnerability, like you know, the launch a, a nuclear weapon that's sitting in a silo in Nebraska, you yeah. could turn off the water supply. Yes. Or you know, yes. stop hydropower. You know, I mean. Well, look what, at that we saw situation. It in the movie, one of the Die Hard movies, where the, in rush hour traffic, imagine if the you lights. manipulate the grid <laughs> yeah, and you start yeah. affecting traffic control devices. It's like 
you know what traffic does. I mean, yeah, it yeah, causes yeah. chaos. I mean, yeah. uh, someone will be having a heart attack. You can't get to them. I mean, it's it you know, people have been telling me that I sort of look like Bruce Willis in his early years. Oh, definitely. You know. <laughs> 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 just wanted to throw that in there in case uh you know people were aware of that <laughs> anyway i think so, he, uh, looking in here i think he's looking more like bruce willis <laughs> yeah you got the bruce willis look yeah we all look like celebrities sort of i look more like uh the guy you want to see in the hall in the, in the alleyway <laughs> don't say how i look like because it's a sign of age any time I've been told in life who I look like, it's always been somebody different, so let's not go there. Really? It's you look like, like oh, a celebrity. I don't know. Look at your famous celebrity. I don't know who. Yeah, I, I was supposed to be a celebrity, and I decided I didn't like, you decided I didn't not like to. the bright light. Yeah, the, yeah. The, it's the being a celebrity. Is pantomiming kind of and sycophantic Double behavior. Rated. And the, Let's just, yeah. yeah this, the fakeness. The and fakeness. like the <laughs> idea of like 45 takes or something and then spitting it out. Look, I just want to say that my friend and I met a, a, a Hollywood star the other day. And uh, very excited to show us, um, you know, video clips. So we were at a party, and he's like, oh, you got to see this. And for like 10 minutes, he's showing us this video clip of this famous actor. And you see like a quarter of his face in the back. He's like, yo, I'm like best friends with him. <laughs> Look at my IMDb. Yeah. I'm like, oh, a quarter of your face is famous. That's true. Because even like if you're a, like, you have to manage your money very well. Um, you're only as good as like your last gig in a way. Yeah, yeah. And that's your last paycheck. So, no. mm -hmm. they, you know. Yeah, but some people you have like to work, Madonna. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was an agent for a company that didn't have like, I don't know how to explain it, but they weren't the current market or the current trends. Okay. So their their gigs were less money now. Yes, yes. But they're still it. a name, yeah. and you'll see them with the other names. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that that would be really hard. You know what I mean? To in terms of celebrity so you're working you know what i mean they're they're aware yeah unless well, you strike it rich in a movie and you stockpile your money and you can get out and well, then you do like weird eccentric movie star stuff otherwise the rest of them have to be really careful well since i look like bruce willis a little bit and do this show you know you never know what the, what, what's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> or no, anyway. seriously, I gotta play. I gotta go tonight. I got something to do. I can't like be stuck in here because like the, the building is taken over by like international like. <laughs> but but Artie, right, tell us about the Libertarian. What, what are the, some of the cases you guys have worked on the last couple of years? Like what, honestly, what are I some of the I just took over chair as uh, as of January. Okay. Um, my goal is to push uh, local community outreach. Okay. Um, I've been working in Brentwood with uh, some amazing like local activists. Uh, one of them is Eileen uh, Bodega. It's the people who feed the homeless. Uh, not homeless, but like poor families over in Brentwood. I work on a lot of activism type stuff, uh, volunteerism. I Excellent. think uh, we can do a better job as private individuals. This is something extreme, i got to mention this. Uh, over yeah. the government. Come government. On, uh, there's a the show that uh, you know our buddy here was on today. Patrick yeah. was on with uh, Devon and one of our friends. Yeah, you were on Sammy's show. I was on the show, too. I had to, like, copy. Um, He's got, That's all it was. He's got an amazing... I figured I'd do two shows in one day. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He's got an amazing background. This uh, gentleman's been through a tough life. Uh, really, really, really tough life. And yeah, like, been through a tough life, then turned it around, and then, like his yeah. cause became so big, it became a, a it, political what, what talking cause? point of the last district attorney race in South Carolina. Homelessness, fixing the people in, in his local uh, wine dance in Brentwood, God. and working with the poor community and people who are down in their luck, uh, people who are on drugs, people who need help. What does he say about New York City? There's an explosion of homelessness. He knows it is, but he understands it's not low. But he has to work local. He's a one guy. Sure. And a small little like organization. He's a community activist. Yeah. I mean, he, do local we, businesses... We all, like, like we all kind of, if we're going to do something, get inspired. If we're not paid for it, it's like we see something yeah. that affects us or other people. And it's yeah. like that's what inspires you. Do local businesses donate food? Some of them do, yeah. Some farms do. Some local businesses do. Um, his program is called the Ink Program. The Ink Program? Ain't, A -I -N -T. Ink, A-I-N-T. Um, they're pretty good, really amazing people. They run, they help uh, do a show out out of uh, Stony Brook University. Yeah, they stepped up so far. They were like basically given a three-hour block. Yeah, wow. wow, really good. And uh, this um, is, I think it's like two to five. Two to five. They're doing so, like in terms of radio slots. And, and they go out and talk show. And feed people. They How feed they people. Doing? They collect. They collect toys for the kids. They collect all types of food, diapers. Uh, women's feminine hygiene stuff, like literally stuff that everyday families need. So Toys for Tots is quite popular. It's great, but... But it's just one of many. And how, what does their CEOs make? 
Yeah, so There's no know. overhead here. The CEOs aren't getting paid. Got it. These are well, local. Any, like, let's say it was like, you'd see a number, it's like we have, we got collected a million toys, we collected this <laughs> much money. How much do they need? Does it really satisfy? So we never hear that part. You know, we'll see the, the press conference and the smiling mm -hmm. faces. Yep. Mm -hmm. and everybody's happy there that got something, but like it's an old saying, like the kid that got nothing on Christmas. Yep. So it's interesting. So that's so nothing in Toys for Tots, but like all these organizations, people like, Expect they're handling it, or and there's inf there's administration and overhead, overhead fees. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> now, yeah. one of the things when you join the Better Business Bureau, there's a chart of what uh, non for profits and what your donations go to administration costs compared to yep. the actual um, per people you donate I mean, to. Look like the Red Cross; they're awful. A lot of these places. I mean, it's like it's like only ten. Yes. Sometimes less to 15% of your $100 goes to the actual victim. This is why I'm going to go to the private individuals <laughs> and deal with the local community over them. Mm -hmm. Eileen's Bodega over there in Brentwood, uh, the AIN program with Devon. These are good people who have been through hell, worked their way up, and want to affect their community in a good way. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. There's some organizations that have 99% administration costs. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. That's criminal. It's for a good. It's a good, for a good cause, but they're all over the place. You see, well, unless they're justifying that, like, well, if they're producing publications, like, you know, ninety nine percent of your cost. <coughs> I, I thought like eighty percent was greedy. I've heard people justify that to me, like, oh, you need for your overhead. No. It's like if you're a nonprofit and you don't know how to, like, I don't know, get people to donate things, especially if you're a nonprofit. If somebody has commercial real estate, we see it all over the place. Why don't you? I don't know. Write that off. Is it not lucrative enough? Mm -hmm. Your overhead should be no more than 25% and all that covers. The rest of that should be going to the public. So imagine paying a non I, I don't know, and expecting one and basically for paying for the, the lights to stay on. I mean, it's nothing against nonprofits, what they're doing, but it's like people don't donate enough. There's no... You Do you know, know one like, non-for-profit that has less than 50% admin no, costs? No. doesn't exist. I also don't know one non-profit, though, that ultimately though, that doesn't have to constantly ask for money. <coughs> they're begging all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, and then if there's budget cuts or competition for another sector, they can be driven out of the industry. But a legislative good, change. But there are good. Um, some of these causes are are, are important causes. One hundred percent. Going for, I mean, take a look at some of these people. I mean, in some of these causes, they've really saved families and lives. They are. I can yeah. talk about some organizations. But how much more could they do? If the CEO wasn't making one point two. Well, they have to have <laughs> their bullet points that they can advertise of why they're good. But I agree with you. If more than 25%, 30% is admin cost, there's something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's but when I saw that... How is that in a business model? Because that would mean, in, in, in translation of that, that's so you're operating at a 1% profit? It's supposed to be volunteer, like your friend. Yeah, right. They'll, after work, out of your own pocket. Yes. Yeah. And everyone gives from their own pocket. Yes. Yep. And you don't need a salary. And you don't need infrastructure. Yep. And you use somebody's building at no cost. Right, charity but non profits is a business sequence, like an S corp. Hundred percent. Yeah, and then if it fails there, like, and then private sector might come in. But in terms of cybersecurity or even da open data, it's like we're supposed to have access to this, this information, and it's not even available online. And in terms of like what he said about prepping people, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and having to show them how to use certain platforms that are already outdated. Right, on right. antiquated technology, it's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we need to all <laughs> recognize that there's certain hurdles that we're going to have to get over before we just say, oh, we're going to beef up cybersecurity. So, are they, if they, I mean, in terms of the federal government, they, they have that bully pulpit. If they wanted to do it, they could. We could say in 10 years, like the, the race to space, we're going to be the most resilient yeah. country in the world in terms of cyber security. But Let's take a look at this for a moment. Ten years, the tech we have will be out there. The, uh, like, well, it worked ten years ago. This is a foundation that, uh, let me pull this up for a second. This should be quite interesting to everybody. The MacArthur Foundation for Opening Governance. Look at that. MacArthur Foundation Research Network on Opening Governance. The need for innovation in how we govern. The opportunity so look at this network. Here's a group of folks who got together. It's a nice logo. Who yeah. who made a really nice logo. Mm -hmm. um, That's a beautiful layout, by the way. Look at that the, excellent uh, layout. Look at such yeah, you know, expensive way it buildings in the like city. That. Oh, look. The opportunity, the need for yeah. evidence 
on what works and how. The need for evidence. You know what's really good about this, though? There's lots of words. Yes. And words are important when you're trying to describe an important Yes, issue. hold on. And they have pictures of humans <laughs> that scroll across the screen Don't really the fast. My name is Patrick Deegan, and I support this. Now, hold on. <laughs> Let me look at these professionals. These are all industry experts are they? who are going to... Um, uh, make review? sure I've seen this I've seen this uh, initial before uh-huh yes and there's oh, a group yeah. that is attempting to get better data out of government I have noticed though what happens sometimes as they push and push data is 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 put out but like you've experienced it's a mishmash of data yeah how is it that the two of you gentlemen on the same foil request got different data is it possible that on five FOIA requests you get five potentially different answers? Or is it possible the guy who sent Patrick the data is now fired? Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Patrick, you like the you like Pew Research. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. guy from Pew Research is one of the council members on here. Okay. So doesn't that have some weight right there? Is it possible? That's what gives it the authority for all of us to agree to it as not a complete fraud. What's the back end of it going to be? Is it going to work? Well, look, I don't know. I'm look at these. These are some large. huge okay. individuals. Okay, time out, though. Tim's Burn Lee. Look at that. You know, University of Toronto, Harvard. And I'm going to say this. This is a team, Harvard. one team in the world that's competing within this. How many other teams are there? In other words, all of their classmates are on other teams. Mm -hmm. This is our team. Is mm -hmm. that enough in terms of business, cybersecurity, if the whole world is the opposing team? You know, every country having mm -hmm. a team, every hacker, every... Go private business look entity. at this guy Lee, Lee that's ran from Pew I mean He's incredible this would have to be the sir. the global dream team to be able to this is the current global dream team about about extracting data properly from the US government you're looking at it this is the current global dream team oh, from scared. what I see that's is all I found out of out of years of research into open gov data how long they've been around author, what have they done um i don't know i think a year or two or three they're fairly new let me ask you though would that team be adequate to take on defending us in terms of cybersecurity from the world and what we're already experiencing in terms of hacking i, I don't know Cybersecurity is an ongoing situation i mean like yes it's the, evolving constantly yeah exponentially even we just go back and to hiring about hackers. ai last time imagine ai hacks yeah. Won't that be fun? Let's take a look. It says meet the network. And I don't mean hacking quick. into AI. I mean AI performing yeah. the hack. Yeah, performing <laughs> there we go. Beth Good Simone, luck. look at that. The Gov Lab uh, directs the Governance Lab and it's Sorry. MacArthur Research yep. Network on opening governance. Look at that. Um, Ste Stefan, I don't know if you've seen him. I've seen his shows and I've read about him before. I've seen him on the Gov Lab. Yeah. Um, he's quite educated and has quite a following in his research. Quite a well known individual there. Um, Yes, and we're considering these guys as the front line of uh, extracting yeah. this data. And I give them credit. It, that's exactly what it would Look, be. The Gov Lab right there, Andrew Young. They're, they're not thinking of now. They're thinking of how to protect in the future or the, yes. the, the evolution of where it could be. In yes, terms they're of not going to make a dent now, but they'll thwart it in the future. Line. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, faculty members, which means that there's heavy administration costs. Yeah, this guy just saying, MIT. just saying. Mm -hmm. The hard administration costs. No, that's here. why I asked you because I didn't get to <laughs> even see the names, and I know you would know better than I did. Uh, in terms of reputation and credibility, is, this would be the dream team then, the global dream team, because that's what you would literally need to take on all the opposition in the world. I mean, it's, yes, I and, agree. I mean, like denial of service type situation. Yes. Imagine everybody in the world in terms of global war or in just industrial. Will these guys be situation? the leaders I mean, to justify turning off? these calls and these random phone numbers that can be set up and spoofed, will they have an ability to, to thwart well, some of that social engineering? From, from beginning of an employee, realizing that these are, if these are the top people, they're going to demand more money. So which means <laughs> they're going to go with the lowest bidder because that's what the government does. Oh, and they're wow. not going to be hired anyway. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's true. General contractor that's is true. government lowest bidder. The lowest bidder. Yeah. Yeah. If the lowest oversight bidder. The oversight isn't there. It's almost like it doesn't matter how right. good the technology is. Now, these guys were the lowest bidder. These guys are the example to get the funding, and then yeah. they bring in, they replace them with uh, lower cost individuals. But look at this set of brilliant people mm -hmm. who are... It's a who's who of tech. It's yeah. a who's who of tech. I mean, that's sick, guys, right? I mean... Um, okay, now in terms of like contingency planning now, is yeah. this the team that could 
take on, let's say you assemble another team. Mm -hmm. Could you assemble another team, or would it be like the Harlem Globetrotters versus the team? No, they'd well, be we're, close. We're the replacement team. They'd be close. You could find a we team are. that was close. Yes, yes, and with me around, we'll do like hard, dot, uh, you know, the, the new Bruce Willis movie. Come in. And uh, it'll be good. Mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll be the new team, guys. Look at, you know, do you guys remember the Verizon commercial from the 90s? When you get the Verizon team, and they're like, oh, yeah, our cell phone works. And the other side, a guy with an antenna hat, they're like, yeah, we can get your cellular working, you know? It's like we're that, that you know, that basic strength. Yeah. But no, I mean, I'm going to bring this up on the next show. The people who are really thwarting these hackers are individuals much like you and me who are doing scam baiting. Yeah. While these individual citizens are doing extreme work, yeah, the getting these hackers the, the no, better than the, the feds, yeah. better than the states. Hackers are always ahead of the people. Is it that. possible that no, the it's three like low of tech us and no tech, and there, this is like the backdoor yeah. type thing. Easy, like change your password. Back Do the three of us have more creds in the end than this dream team of experts? Oh, this team. does it come down that's to not us? on paper? No, they blow everybody out of the water. But, yeah, the but three in of the us. End, who's the men in the but where, that's the a, that was my who's point. We're not trying. Also, do you know what I mean? Mm. Now, if you were to put a <laughs> position against this, because that's what's at stake here. Mm. Otherwise, what's the what's the monetary value other than we've seen, which could be the monetary value? Mm -hmm. So, cybersecurity in terms of the ransom. Yes. That yes. we see, we saw it in the Cronus. Matrix. They got Cronus this year. Yes. My job was affected by that. How many oh, sta how many cities man. were shut down? Oh, Payroll man. because the Cronus got hacked and hijacked. Oh, man. For what six months? A the year. Kronos time clock systems. Yeah, that was a big deal. So the it, the the national standard oh. for timekeeping in governments. In other words, mm -hmm. it's like creating <laughs> a, creating a Y two K, right? Yes, so, nice. and uh, it's not talked about. It's 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 it's, it's hidden because the pol political leaders don't understand it, and the IT people want to keep their jobs. Hundred percent. And it's shoved underneath the yeah. carpet there, right? <laughs> So, uh, a very interesting... Um, well, this showed on the carpet. I mean, Stuxnet, like I mentioned before, that Stuxnet. was available to a lot of people. They posted that everywhere. Yes. Years ago. Yes. I mean, that's long enough ago where hopefully they can't... But, but it, was a, it was a way, it was a way like, to advertise that the America can fight back with their own attacks, you know? Yeah, yeah, but... Not without bragging about it, I guess, yes. in its own way, and yes. like being truly have... covert. Hey, <laughs> we've got the most covert thing in the world. <laughs> Shh, <laughs> yeah. Don't tell anybody, but that was us. As they post on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it'll be like it'll be like put discreet. somebody else's like, flag on the screen. The current international <laughs> hack that took place was not from the United States, you know foundation that was created in 1723 you know, as an initiative to Thomas Jefferson for bolstering national security that we reapplied. It wasn't that. Well, to be perfectly honest, you look at, dude. we need to go back to what we did in the 90s a lot of the time. When you had these top hackers who were getting busted left and right with Anonymous and all this crap. I they hired, we have to go to they hired some of them because some of them were pulled out and they were hired. Yes, yes. Guess what? The hackers are always ahead of the government. Well, that They're not going to be means. hired because they're idealists. Yes. I, there's no room for idealism. I'll say this openly, and I need to get this on the record. So what happened yes. in the 80s, and I knew people. So I don't touch these things. What I'm talking about is like the computer with the buttons on it. So I really couldn't be blamed for anything. But if you want to get <laughs> knowledge to actually looking into it, like what they have now is like kids can download an app to hack you. Yeah. I mean, they can go to a YouTube tutorial. So in terms of like open data, it would be easier to access... The, the, the ability to <laughs> hack into it than it actually is to request the information through yes. open data policy. It's, it's, it's astounding. Yeah, you know yeah, what I, mean? yeah. I will say um, hacking data will possibly give you more accurate data than yes. asking for it legally. And in terms of oversight, it's like, well, do they even have it? Like you said, did, was it a mistake? It's like, please tell me you have the data. You're supposed to. I hope to. that the, what happened with your FOIL request was a mistake in two different engineers provided different data because that's a good question i just didn't understand i, I doubt it because i didn't get so. called back by tony seriously call me he, uh, <laughs> i no, had it was a to mistake. we all know it was a mistake Always. no no you know what it is there's lots of moving parts and if you don't have all your ducks in a row yes you're like a human and you have to move your and that's when oh right hang on a second i gotta go and then i'll well, continue that conversation later yes. but a lot of moving parts when you have to move your key, your fingers on a keyboard and press the right sequence. It's yeah, but I actually parts. went down because uh, he 
did the effort for me last time because I wanted to be. So how does the full of removed from the go? process? Because I figured if they saw my name, it would be like, oh look, oh, I spilled it, my coffee on it. How do you do the full request? Is it a form? It's a PDF form. Oh, it's a PDF, and what you have to do, you have to fill it up. And then PDF? you have to send it to the right department you want to foil. Oh, so you have to fill it out, print it, and then email it. You email it's it. A, it's one. It's That's a, not open gov. It's no. no. You got to email it. I have to email it to find, there's like 30 departments listed for the foil. They you have to pick to which department. as specific as possible. I sent so. it to four departments because I said, screw it, I'm sending all four. Mm, got it. They want you to be very specific. Yeah. I got two Which is funny because the, the project we were looking at is kind of like one of the more, let's say, controversial projects in mm -hmm. years, especially like they yeah. had media attention. It's got, it's got a lot of, uh, what would you call it, points that would make any developer go, no, mm -hmm. don't build there. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, uh, big time. So, but they keep doing it, and it's, it's almost like comical in terms of logo branding. They're trying to like, yeah. you know, it's like, Sinai, it's good for you. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> so, so, guys, I just want to um, uh, go back to this for a moment before we jump into the metaverse. Metaverse. We're running a, a, a little long here, but this is a pretty exciting conversation here. So, Chris mentioned a couple of things here regarding the color of his water and oh, what wow. that has meant wait, to wait, him. Wait, stop. What color? Uh, in my what apartment, my water is no, cloudy, is weird. like a white mist that makes my skin dry. That might be the head there. I don't know where you are, but they're putting heavy amounts of chlorine in the water. Rhode and Island. the chlorine kills the E. coli. Rhode Island, Col right? Yes. I, wa I yes, want to say that again. It kills it? the E. coli. <laughs> it kills the E. coli. So and your intestines. <laughs> yeah, you can find out so if you run your water hot. Does it chlorine. smell? <laughs> Uh -huh. um, I don't know how long ago this is if he's there, but if you if you run it hot, does it smell like a, a sauna? And, does I mean, it smell like a sauna if you run it hot. Well, we'll have to put it this way because I've done this at home. If you, I have a no. salt water pool yeah, with limited fine. chlorine, and yeah. it seems like the salt water pool might be safer to drink than what comes out of the faucet. Really, agreed. agreed. Yeah. Really, and then there's a whole bunch, of, and we've got good water compared to other places too mm -hmm. on Long Island. Mm -hmm. Some places they have to take the wells offline because of industrial runoff and contamination. It's really Got it, got it, got it. Because I'm not an expert, I'll say it's really not cool, dude. It's like really, 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 it's like moy mouth. So I, 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 I got a, like, uh, a professional water system put in my house with this, with this uh, but salt tank. But it's not cheap. No, it cost me like 10 Gs. But does everybody have that? Uh, no, no. So I, can people... I noticed the water's better. 100%. After the storm, it doesn't smell like medicine, yeah. which is what I used to get. But the problem is, these yeah. everyday individuals, these normal people, we can't all drop 10 grand on a tank. I wish we could. But some of these guys can't. So they're drinking what? Chlorine, cloudy water. Yeah. Should Chris Not foil that, that information? He, you could try. Um, I would bring his water to get tested. Bring his water to get tested. Yeah, there are independent places yeah. now. It's just independent water test. He can look it up online? Or? Yeah. At this point, you, you're going to want to because if it's cloudy, you know, you're not supposed to see that. You can call your local water authority, but typically... No smell, he says. No sauna smell. No sauna smell. But I would still get it tested. If it's cloudy, yeah, there's something yeah, in there. You got to get that tested. <laughs> like, literally, grab a, grab a thing pretty fresh. Look up some independent water testing in your area. It could be just like, I don't, I don't know if... Like, gotta, gotta go to a pool place. Up, I like, inject the like, pH and chemicals. <laughs> we're now that the column is emerging contaminants mm -hmm. and the emerging contaminants is everything that they're saying was put into the ground in the 50s and the 60s and 70s through neglect or accident or failed oversight like Grumman, uh, Bethpage Plume and it could be landfills like yeah. so now that stuff apparently in some cases is being pumped back up and that's what's in people's drinking water. Why is oh it's being pumped back up? Our water well, yeah, comes from the aquifers. saturated in certain so areas, so certain wells are more affected, and they usually can, you know, a, a district or, a, you know, anything that's hooked up, they're going to have to constantly monitor each one to make sure what's within health. So, Patrick, when, when they realize... And obviously take it offline or treat it, but... So treat it. So the, we talked the, about the chemicals earlier. that are coming out. They need to pull them out. So like Suffolk County Water Authority, for example, it's, more money just came to the county, but it seems like it's probably going to be <laughs> sewer <laughs> infrastructure, meaning expansion of the sewer lines to allow more density. So let me ask you, let me ask you not the waste for the treatment or the removal of chemicals. We found out. So, so I, w I wanted to bring that up. So I think most people believe that water treatment plants have a process where the water is washed and the chemicals are removed. What happens in most of the when, when there's a high degree of chemicals in certain uh, water places, how do, they do, how do they fix that on a general level? You, in the water, you mean? <coughs> yes. Uh, there's like a, I think it was Shell even purchased it. I, I don't want to be wrong there, but there's a, 
forms of bioremediation. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's like a petroleum or an oil or something like that. That is kind of natural or has natural elements to it. So they've actually applied these like, I don't know if it's microbes or forms of algae that mm -hmm. actually eats it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But um. that would be purchased by them now. It's not commonly available. Mm, uh, okay. Radioactive waste or things like that in the soil, I, I'm not too familiar with how they're actually able to remove some of the chemicals from the water because mm. these are emerging chemicals and some of them you can't break down. Well, it turns out that's the one they call forever chemicals. Yes. So nobody's kind of ever seen this <laughs> and we're kind of guinea pigging ourselves to find out what's going to happen. Well, are they diluting the water in some cases where the chemical tests show high? Of course. I think that's, that's the mingling thing where... So it, the mingling thing, what does that mean? Let's say the... Like where we are is in Suffolk, all right? So it's larger mass of land, um, more potential recharge, and more access to the, the aquifers, all right? The aquifers are federally protected. They put wells in certain areas to pump the water up. Mm -hmm. Now let's... A water district would ultimately want to have more access to the water and put in as many wells as they kind of could or have the best access. If there's pollution in one area, think of it as the old game Battleship, right? Yes. You want... Where are you hitting it? Yeah, so if the pollution would be there, you don't want to put your ship where the bombs are going to be landing. You know what I mean? So if there is something, they want to have the ability to actually take that well offline or God. take it offline so they can treat it or remediate it in any way that they can. Mm -hmm. So the... Federal protections, the oversight, are supposed to prevent that stuff from happening. Okay. This is stuff that already happened years ago, it's even already be before the, ep the EPA. God. So what they're doing now is as wells show up, it's not like uh, it might not be an immediate contaminant that's entering this, the groundwater source. It might be something from the past. So the only way to bring that to a health limit is like, let's say you have like an ounce of contaminated water. If you add like a another ounce of non-contaminated water, you're probably going to get below the threshold. Now you're the below threshold. the limit. Of course. So, so you want... So that's, a, that you, that's happened where the threshold was high, they mingled regular water, and all of a sudden they're below the threshold. Hey, numbers yeah. dropped. We're good. That's all good. And when you said about the, the water that comes out of a wastewater treatment plant, it's uh, effluent, basically. It's, but it's, it's like treated sewage. It's, I think it's also called gray water. Gray water. Yeah. Gray, so gray water just seems like hand, when you wash your hands and that water, it's not... Waste is gray. It's slightly it's used water, but it's which you could, we could reuse, but it's like not going to watering close. lawns. There's p some people want to pass legislation that'll allow you to use, you know, gray water instead of it just running into a cesspool or something like yeah. that. Running into, a, I'm not sure what the infrastructure would be. I wonder how much mixing goes on out there, and how much uh, of this of this mingling of waters mentioned from the past in some of these studies. Well, one of the, the well, ways they now, remediate but it mingled in the 40s or whatever. One of the ways they're remediating soil that had the contamination was by, I guess you could call it expediting the groundwater flow, by literally injecting, I think it was, I don't know if it was water or something, but saturating and causing it to further and then actually sucking up at the other end. Oh, wow. I mean, it's an interesting project, you wow. know, for a, like a, a push, kid to watch, process. and it's like a massive contract, but it's like that's where we're at for remediation. Mm. It's like that or dig it up. So, so... The, and clean it. So, so water's got issues. U.S. infrastructure has issues. We're having some supply chain issues. Uh, our data has issues. Our data <laughs> has issues. Um, the, uh, the United States m may be having some, some, some infrastructure problems uh, on multiple fronts there. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even say what, would, what I could think of, of how you could, like, in terms of, like, a wastewater treatment plant in a certain area, like a cyber hack, it, it could be more than ransomware, you know, mm. type. Could be big. Yeah, because you... Did you guys see I don't that? even want to say what the consequence could be, but, it would, you know, in terms of affecting a local area, it would almost be like, depending on how large the system is, it would be like almost like nuclear. It's like, you know, you don't have to blow off a bomb, which is going to cause a fallout that's going to that come that across. I mean... I mean, if water gets screwed up in Nassau County, you're talking about 1.3 million people. That's a lot of humans. That is. Well, I'm in Suffolk. I'm good. Like our hacks. <laughs> yeah, well, you got more. You got 1.7 out there, right? 1.5. Yeah, I mean, that was the, it's the, it's I, I don't even want to say it, and but there's that's no the, bridge the zero day. Through. You understand Which this? Bridge? So, like, any one of the zero day options is like, that's Oof. a destabilizer. That's a strategic strike. It's like, it, that's what they're. 
looking out for it, but they're using the fact that we're vulnerable because people are ransoming. It's like if somebody can hack in and they just want money, good. They didn't want to do any malicious intent, but they could have. Pam. That's a big threat. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I hope that the, the dream team we were looking at, uh, the MacArthur Foundation there is going to really... Yeah, and then the resources that they're offered and the extension of their team and then how, you know, I mean, it's possible. Just a second. But you have to create, like, not a 10-year model, but look 10 years into the future and then create yeah. something that lasts for another 10. Even further. Yeah. Even if it's a more closed system that we rely on for certain things that we need, that resiliency. In it. Otherwise, we are vulnerable. That's there has to be a morality that comes back and a nationalistic view where people truly care about who they work for in the country. And uh, every soldier, every citizen is part of it on a bigger scale, you know? Yeah. And and you see how many people say these things. I, I, have I, I wonder how many my house. citizen people hacktivists there are, so to speak, that are uh, thwarting things internationally because they see it coming. I mean, it, it's massive. Do you understand what I mean? And then like, Well, I guess that that's a good thing because the U.S. government has no idea to properly share data properly. <laughs> <laughs> the open data thing is nonsense. But we probably can't get hacked because we can't we even get to it properly. Why don't we solve this problem and go to the metaverse and solve all this? Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> so, the, so, so real player one, right? If you saw the movie. The book's live better. The yeah. book's yeah. better, by the way. Can we stop there? Yes. The book's amazing. The book's amazing. The movie's good. Oh, no, no, The no, book no. is unreal. No, in, really? I gotta, it's I, different. Interview's over. Different. He just said the book was better. I'm a reader. I'm sorry. I'm a reader. I like no, no. That. It's I just like a, that. You're not supposed to But in that, that world, <laughs> in that world, it's like it's amazing. In, the, in this crummy reality in these vans and boxes and put on their glasses. It's all they want to do. Yeah. And is, I mean, look at what you're describing. The U.S. government's failing in every infrastructure. Yeah, metaverse is really exciting for 2040. We're going well, in that direction. That's what's it sad. Like, what, what I'm watching with that is, like I said, the race of space before. We're seeing the marketing for Metaverse, and I think it's like they're hoping that we'll get there, as opposed to all the attention being put on, let's get there. Mm, it's almost like, hey, if we, we can, can sell the there. idea, we can yeah. get there. Yeah. If we can get everybody behind it, come on, guys, it's a team effort. I just want to say, pure research, the guy from pure research happens to be on the, on the foundation council. So here's Ooh. pure. Well, research. you've got you've got a, a committee that looks like they have integrity. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They okay. they would have no other vested interests from what they're looking like, other than the academic and intellectual pursuit. But I'm just saying, it's like wow. So you believe? That's, in other words, that's the dream team against if if two other countries or two other groups that are massive in their own right want to come against it. That's what you're fighting now. It, it's it's not yeah. that they can't handle groups. it. It's the workload that's incessant every second. That's coming in. Every moment, if you will, not even second, but every moment that wants to be redefined in the most minute sliver. All right? And then imagine applying the AI hacking. The, the yes. brain that has yes. compiled all the data and it's out thinking the hacker or the defender. Look, we don't know the moral and stance. We don't know the individual. numbers, too. We don't know the numbers. How many? No, the moral stance yeah. was it every one member. Of, was it... One of the Koreas had employed something like 50,000 to a cyber army at one yes, point. Yes. We've got our own branches, but it's like, it's so secret. It's like, wait a minute, and everybody's doing this? Yeah, yeah. It sounds like everybody needs their own cyber army. That's what yeah, it sounds like. 100%. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so let's take a look, right? So um, our pure research friends say the metaverse in 2040, and like Patrick said, hype, hope, right? Hopefully it turns out to be that way. Uh, maybe it's all three. Experts are split about the likely evolution of truly <coughs> immersive metaverse. If you remember last show, um, they're about to release from our friends who say they invented that term, uh, new glasses that cross the bridge between VR and AR. So hardware and uh, glasses are coming up to get as immersive as possible. Can I ask you a question? You're please, ready for this though? please. At what point do we cross the bridge that we are now looking into synthetic hallucinogens that are curtailed to allow for the cyber experience to be more <laughs> streamlined into the user interaction? I'm sure <laughs> because it's there. there still might be some people that have this disconnect. Like, when do we, like the Neuralink, actually like integrate with the technology or the software? Like, because truthfully, the why, why am I going into a metaverse and VR when I can just have it probed right into my brain? You to see where I'm going the video with this? Games, enhance the video games. It's pretty why cool. do I need to put the VR on, though, when we have the technology where I can just have it 
go injected and right in into my brain. Well, that's a, that's a very good point, though. And I just want to also or, mention or Neuralink's not going to yeah. work. I want to mention that uh, I'm a heavy, heavy duty user of the Oculus too. Mm -hmm. And if I'm drinking or I've smoked something, it's uncomfortable. I have to be completely sober and conscious. Yes. Otherwise, it screws with me. Yeah, right. So you're, you're talking about enhancing everything. drugs. Currently, the drugs actually hurt the experience. Oh, no, I said a synthetic drug. I said how far. No, I'm not talking about modern drugs. I'm talking about how far do we get to that point, like ethically, where we're di you're figuring out the synthetic drug that is, is perfect in terms of the technology. That finds that happy so, like Without disrespecting technology, like in terms of pharmacology, it's also a science that's being applied to this. So in terms of this, they're talking about the immersive experience. And the, the, the reason I said the hallucinogenic yes, synthetic yes. drug is I'm looking at this and it's all basically, they're talking about like detect, beyond detect. the mind's eye, you know, it's all, you know, it's just like an acid trip for lack of a better expression. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, you know, I mean, and that's a bit of a more advanced and immersive 3D online world. Yeah. 50% like, <laughs> of these experts say that they expect by 2040 the metaverse will be much more refined and truly, fully immersive. 46% of these experts say by 2040 the metaverse will not be much more refined. So it's like m middle of the road, a few extra people are bought in. The it. problem is our technology hasn't really advanced in big jumps. We've Correct. gone small steps. Correct. For a long time in the 80s, 90s, we jumped. Yes. Huge yeah. jumps. Yeah, yeah. In the 20... Yeah. Two, to the uh, sorry, 2010 to 2020 now, yeah. we've, we've kind of, you know, stagnant. I agree with that. And the VR glasses are not immersive. Oh, God, they're awful. They should be. I'm in there, but uh, after an hour or two, I have to take them off. And a lot of people have a uh, medical issue with them. Yes. They're nauseous. But they're talking about low tech. Now, you, in the next couple of years, there's going to be some crazy tech coming out. I hope and so. an injection that enhances your experience. Yeah, but you don't even have to, like, your senses, if you will, right? Yeah. Your peripherals. Mm that tie into the CPU, yes. why, why would I go into the peripheral and have to process that? Why not just tap into the CPU like Neuralink? Why am I gonna download a video to have it sent to me when I can just watch it by turning off my eyes from well, I don't know if you meant physical use for a couple of because, hours. Because I truly believe, and let's talk about this for a moment. Which would be nice for sleep. That the Neuralink, yeah. the Neuralink <laughs> is, is, is not sleep. the final evolution. I believe that if you look no, at logic no, and evolution, it's a mm -hmm. suit. So having glasses as opposed to augmenting your body, in my opinion, makes the most sense long term. Yeah. Well, like you said, the glasses, like, but it's such effort is put into the progress or the, the, where getting we could there. be that they're not improving anything we have where it's almost like we're getting to the point where nothing really seems to work anymore. Yeah, like or if there's a glitch, copy. everything is disposable. It's like, oh, just send it back or <laughs> return it, but we're not, you know, we're just going to throw it out because it's not worth it to, to do anything beyond the, you know. And then the tech is like, I, I was telling my son this. He's like going to be 16. I'm like, it's insulting to me that the tech is still disposable at this point. Augmented reality. this augmented reality. I think we might have a conversation augmented like this. Reality. The idea that we're but paying this much and knowing that it's going to be done in two years, it's like augmented reality is cool because you wear the glasses and you see the overlay of the map. While yeah, you're sure. On. I'm down. I'm down. Augmented reality, where you don't have to hold the computer to get the data in your eye. The next generation network knowledge ecosystem can be built in ways b uh, better serve people than the current web does. Web 3.0. More I see security. this as purely this, going shopping or like the same yeah. way people do Google yes, it's Earth using a and like go around the world. I don't have to leave you. the house. You know, you can go <laughs> see like Venice by like virtually experiencing it. Yes. 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 Actually, but here's the thing, like there's, there's other sci-fi about it. So do you have, how are you truly interacting with anything in the real world at that point? You're reliant on, on the meta Verse, yes, you you're will. not seeing it for what it really so is. So it only rely. It, it's only as good as who's there. I mean, with certain social media platforms, mm -hmm. some people don't use them and things like that. Okay, that means that's an entire world that's cut off for you. Yes. So in terms of like, like the end to end, you yes, know what I mean? This is this is brilliant in the end to end. But if you don't get to the end, you've just created a bunch of busy work, which is fun, fantastic for the for the stock. You know, mm -hmm. you play this game all day. You know what I mean? Sure. For years, and then a new CEO, but. Uh, the, the, the metaverse will fully merge as its advocates predict. Profit motivate uh, motives are driving significant investments. Makes sense. 
<laughs> compared with today, far more people will find the metaverse useful enough to access on a daily basis, like I do. I'm Technology at, to create an immersive universe is possible, like an entire world that is completely, you can live there the entire time. The pandemic gave XR development a big boost. It certainly <laughs> did. And there are a number of Don't go out anymore is the moral there. Don't leave the house. Don't leave the, the house. It's too XR. dangerous. Uh, <laughs> the com combination of VR and AR. <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine the daily meta warning? Warning, don't go outside. So today. basically COVID gave a boost to the metaverse. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It allowed that evolution because it More, yeah, the So the like government us. telling you not to leave your house helped this business. Yes. Gee, how, how can... Uh, can I know, say screw the government for telling me to stay home? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they go on vacation, they can no, travel, they so they didn't. virtually did it. It's, you know, <laughs> kids are also were home, so they were yeah. online more. And yep. It's like any game, you know, you get bored with it, let's go to the... So the look VR at this, for a the while. Metaverse look, we, we, we are the generation where VR is not new to us. Yes, right. Yeah, we've been seeing it. But AR is. Yeah, calling the XR world right, right, our right. future. AR right. is fairly new and XR is a whole different level. So exactly, yes. the next level. So the, the Metaverse will not fully emerge in the ways today's advocates hope. It will not be seen as useful in daily life. So you're not going to work. We're not watching like Ready Player One where they go to work in the Metaverse. I think it's inevitable. I'm not sure. Personally, I think it's inevitable to end up that way. But telecommuting is huge, like teleworking. Totally. It's going to happen no, just like yeah, this. It, it, it'll it'll be a agree. market. It, it'll exist, but it's almost like certain technologies. Watch this. Like Even we have cell phones, but landlines still exist. Totally. Yeah. So totally. certain things are almost like compatible to our lives. We just integrate them, you know, newer tech. Like this well, still, I like this prediction. That's well, a good prediction. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's a yeah. positive one for yep. you, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, the technology needs to reach a lot more people uh, to be ready. Everyone's got to be involved. Everyone's got to have a cell phone for it to really make sense for everyone to be there. I think everybody does pretty uh, much. People prefer living in layers of real reality. No. I don't know about that. I disagree with that 100%. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look at the drug use. People aren't in, in reality half to the time. To be perfectly honest, I, I game and do stuff on the outside to escape reality. Yes. I That's get out of it. I want to escape. I agree. I think what they're saying is that people have so much of it, they'll really like their real life. No. I hope so. I doubt it, too. I doubt it. Um, real life know. sucks, by the way. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's fun <laughs> like to when I there. use When I use the tech <laughs> now, I go in and out. I yeah. use various tech for various purposes, and that's it. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. So the idea, if I want to go shopping, I have to go into the, the metaverse. Or if yeah. I want to learn information, I have to go into the metaverse. Go to the library in the metaverse. You're talking to... Uh, you know I'm what I mean? If I want to talk to friends now. online, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a great notion in terms of packaging everything, but... I, I, I don't need all of that. You know, it's like apps on my phone even. It's like, why are you wasting my, my time with this right. monitor or this... Oh, I've had relationships software. with people I never met that I know online. That I guess that would be my argument if they were there. Like, yeah. let's go back to that. Like, can I streamline it so it's really for me? Like, I don't need useless data. I don't need warnings. Like, the the third party and then the the advertising side to it. I think that's the idea. I mean, of I I Web I, I'm, I get mad at this. I sound like negative, but every time I see this, it's like it, it insults me because. We're not there yet, so how dare you do this? It's like, so you're going to make us wait for this because you said you're going to do it? <laughs> and then we're also that other generation. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Public oh, the worries. metaverse, huh? In 2040. Let's take a look. Public worries about the impact of surveillance, capitalism, and the abuse by authorities. We capitalism. Our government supplies us enough. We don't need the capitalists to do it. You know? <laughs> um, and also, there are a number of threatening and harmful uses of uh, XR. Clearly, you could use it to very to do very bad things so i mean um you know these experts noted a number of problems that may worsen and arise in the metaverse spaces including reduction of uh, uh reduction of uh autonomy right so everybody knows everything about each other oh, sorry, I and people's ability years, to control like, their lives in, in almost 20 years 18 years yeah i would want to be able to not put on a vr headset or an ar headset i'd want to be able to like in 20, 18 years in terms of tech right i should be able to put my phone down, put it on a table, mm -hmm. and we watch right here in 3D. Agreed. You Probably. know what I mean? Like Star Wars. I'm like just the saying, but, 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 but it looks better. Okay? But like, like HD, yeah. 4K, 8K. They don't have to call it H HD. They don't have to call it LED. They don't have to call it anything. They can call, call it, it working. <laughs> no, no, like invent the thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Not, 
not rely on the the previous invention and improve upon it. It's like, hey, make something new. Do, yeah, this is sci-fi too. This is cool. You can do this. You know, put some physics into it. Humans are going to be forced to wear these glasses. It's coming. You know it is. Well, no, we've already got the, the glasses. Businesses You're, want this. He's trying this. to project right now. This doesn't work in politics. But but no, it's on politics. That's why no, I'm not glad to be on. No, that doesn't no, no, work. No, but I, I do believe that. This no, in is politics something. you can agree to this. They'll just legislate them out. Yes. Hmm. I see. I see. There, you're done. Done. Got it. Gone. Got it. Because he had a hundred people call his office and petitions were signed. And, which is my... And you didn't get to them first right. with your insiders. I'm you know sorry, what I mean? you're right. He's absolutely right. Yes. And one of the examples that I will agree that happened to me yesterday where you're right and I'm wrong uh -oh. is oh. the town that opted out of selling recreational... How many cars. towns? Most. Oh, yeah. Most no towns. No reason. No, no, there's a reason. Yes. Ah. Uh, they don't want to make money? <laughs> no, I can't say that because I think tax I went there earlier huge. on the other show. There's a lot of other stuff. But you, There's you interest are involved right, in you're it absolutely. remaining illegal. Yes. yes. There are interests that actually capitalize, and there's a whole system, if you will. Yes. The problem is that I don't benefits off that. It was set up to... I'll give but, you an example. Point, like, let's say you were... were solved, so uh, no more drug epidemic, no more overdoses. That would mean no more rehabbers. That would mean no more people in the therapy. If you cure in government programs. Illness, you understand? No customers. You yes. don't need psych and, a psych and, and Good point, psychiatry though. would be more of a historical pursuit at that point. Yeah. Good point. So you're like right. Before when people had these illnesses, before when people, you know, so. But anybody, advocates could come to the government and say, we well, don't want this VR stuff here. And cl click of a finger, it's not available in that region. Yes. You're absolutely right. Well, in right. terms of I've tech and happen. driving forces, we still don't, I mean, they're, they're making breakthroughs with cancer, but. But aren't these corporations going to pay off these governments? Yes. Make sure 100%. They'll overcome, they'll to overcome a, the resistance by uh, payoffs. To an extent. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, oh, it's so funny. I don't know how it works. I've never seen it. I guess that's. Where where it's the corruption, that's the illegal part. You know what I mean? I guess but you have to be a part it, of it. But twenty forty will be. The I never watched guys. where the money went that far to really know where it goes. Twenty forty, I'll be out of New York. But you never care. see the money <laughs> go like that. It's just. But by twenty forty, we'll be the old guys. Be like, I don't want that technology in my place. You know. Well, and it's not only that. Like, by twenty forty, that's starting now. That's saying from now till then, eighteen year old. This is the world that we're creating for them. This is yes. what they're gonna want. And yes. I don't know if we're gonna be able to dictate that. I'm seeing what I saw through. COVID, they said they saw more VR use, maybe at the beginning, but then we saw a, a, a massive movement of people unplugging and going outside. Yes. yes. And that's that's continuing to surge. So maybe this is just a last-ditch market effort to not lose massive share that, you know, I haven't oh, watched where man. they're at. Wow. Comes down the money again, thought. huh? So they don't lose massive, because, yeah, people are getting bored of the Oculus and the sales Yeah, are going but there. wait, there's more. By oh, 2040, man. and you're looking at it as an old man, it's like, so, oh, that's fantastic. So if I have a kid today, when he's 18, he'll be born into the metaverse. Wow. So take a look. They got some notes from some of these specialists. Vice President, National Research Initiatives, offered a compact prediction writing. The metaverse will, at its core, be a collection of new and extended technologies. Makes sense. Easy to imagine. Isn't that vague? No, like the best the and hologram, worst of everything. I mean, like, um, I could use another drink. Wouldn't it be like Replicator, you know? Yeah. Ooh. I'll need this. So like, Star Trek now. Yeah. I like it. Absolutely. Look, look well, our cell phones things. are, you know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. oh, wow, I want a Star Trek communicator. And then it was the, what was it, the StarTac phone? And the next up. The, the Motorola <laughs> Flip. You know? And the good end of the <laughs> continuum are things like the ability of people interact um, with others, um, you know, without being in the same physical space. Without having to spend hours um, trying to f get to places and they're interacting right away, so there's some benefits to that. You of course. Know? So different uh, specialists arguing the point whether Probably. it's good or bad. Um, it's a really interesting read. I will say that in my conversation about this article, ten people have ten different opinions. Of course. Wow. You sir have a different opinion than most other people. I, I, I like your opinion. I think you're quite realistic in the way you're viewing it. And it frustrates it's not me. so absolute. I think that's what I'm learning from you. This is not an absolute and can be turned on the dime with advocates who don't want this in their region or 
have their own competitive product they're coming out with. Something different. Better. Yeah, well, this, for example, uh, the, this line here, though. For example, the Children's Hospital of Colorado is using XR to help change the pediatric hospital experience. I mean, that's great marketing. That's awesome. That's awesome, you know? For instance, the distraction and pain management reducing the need for anesthesia and physical therapy. So that's yes. fantastic. Yes. Now, that positive application in that setting is good. But how many kids with a VR set are already being affected by TikTok and videos and what we used to see like the, the <laughs> yeah. So how many kids are also like you could almost like and in fact you can do this. It's so let's let's bad. play this game real fast. Yeah. Yeah. Look up how many children are being treated for epileptic traits from video, YouTube, TikTok. You understand? Yeah. Wow, you think there's a statistic out there for that? There's gotta be. Or it's a magic trick that I can do. Really? Like you think there's how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? And I shouldn't say that too loud. I think seven hundred is the number. Marketing. <laughs> Would you like to buy a woodchuck? <laughs> Actually, yeah, but uh, I mean, mm -hmm. dude, they're kind of cool. I have them, but like I'm not supposed to, and you know, there's like protections against that. No comment. Okay. So I just tell people it's a raccoon. It's a raccoon. So, it's a rabbit. So let's take a look at that. What's the search? Because you can have those now. Give me a search. search. I don't know. I don't. Um, epileptic seizures. Epileptic seizures. Yes. From. From. Hang on a second. VR. No, I wanted to see if it was going to be in the top ones. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, Flashing lights, drugs. From drugs, from dogs, no, 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 from no, no, no. babies. In dogs. <laughs> Say uh, digital media. I love this. It's like cracking a code. Just Look at that. Look at that. It. I'm just waiting for the delay. Oh, it's coming through. It says for about 3% of people with epilepsy, uh, exposure to flashing lights in the sense of... Some gifts, industry. videos, everything. So for children, where I mean, that would be a great test for, I guess, epilepsy. It's like, hey, hook them up to the VR. And then we look at the people seizure. also asking, absolutely, video, seizures and epilepsy. Electronic yeah, devices. Of safety on social media and other platforms. How to disable video audio play. It's causing stress in some people. It's like, you know, just uh, some people are desensitized to it, if that makes sense. But uh, apparently there were some new studies coming out of certain videos that were like too many pop-ups. In other words, uh -huh. it was causing, causing like a neurological overload where kids would seize up a little bit. But there were some ER cases, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Wow. I, Interesting. I hate to say it. The Ready Player One. Remember when that guy was going to try to buy the company and take yes. it over? Yes. He wanted to fill like 80% ads, right? Yes. He said anything more than that would call seizures. Yeah. I was just look saying look that. I remember that. Just, <laughs> but it's a video game addiction, which is yes. actually being hey. treated. But... <laughs> Uh, oh, that's an interesting. Uh, Sim just right there. do symptoms of video game addiction. Symptoms it's almost like it, it's yeah. like being a drug addict in a way. It really is. It's that adrenaline high. Yeah, like you, adrenaline you're high losing it. You're that adrenaline. It, it, like the lethargic behavior, you know, the lot, you know. Ooh, look, look, look WebMD. You know, I got right? a nice like, article. Oh, uh, WebMD is bad. Come on, you have cancer. No matter what uh, WebMD says, you have cancer. Well, let's just say, <laughs> here's, here's, here's here's some signs to look for. Thinking about gaming all or a lot of the time. Been there. Feeling bad when you can't play. Yeah, but this is not the science behind it. Mm. This is the Effects, the word right, salad the words. that they're trying to dress up for. The word salad, Common yes. play, you know? Yep. If you go to the science of it, like you were saying, it's, it's mm -hmm. neurologically affecting you. I can't remember if it was the serotonin levels and dopamine mm -hmm. or exactly what it was, but... The effects are actually real, and then it's yeah. like a detox they have to go through. Take a look at this one I found. But see, there are actually children guides. that were wetting their pants that it became a problem a couple of years ago because they weren't even like so. They, like like wow. an addict, they won't eat. So let's They'll take a sit look there at for this. twelve hours, oh, not eating, not and even going to the and bathroom, and then I, like, well, well, now I've once I've gone to the bathroom and then sit there. I mean, it's like it's a bad problem, you know. It's like how could the alcoholic who's sitting there passed out in the corner be like that? It's like. Um, it's a form of an addiction, and he went that far. It's like yes, video so game. People use video games like there used to be uh, social mechanisms to, to watch out for a kid watching too much TV. Now, with what's going on, it's like it, like in terms of the metaverse, it's it's forcing you into it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know my son had to get yes. special s glasses. It might be from watching, looking at a monitor too long. And they so have VR, it's like or AR, it's yes. like wow. Well, they want you to use blue blockers now. 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, look I for the screen protection. Screen yep. protection. So take a look. It yeah. says is it about that enough, though, in 10 years? Or are we going to find out, like, like with the water and stuff, it's like in terms of emerging contaminants, is it going to be an emerging problem with the tech that we were applying to ourselves? Yeah, like we won't be able to see blue anymore because they've screwed up our yeah. color set in our eyes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It says 16 to 15% of all gamers exhibit signs that could be characterized as addiction. Yeah. There are two major types of video games and therefore two major types of video game addictions. Standard video games, generally designed to be played by a regular player, involve a clear goal. The other type of games are these online multiplayer games. I've been playing, I'm not an addict. I uh, haven't I've heard that before. <laughs> game for seven years. What game? Uh, Clash of Clans. Oh, God. Okay. I, I've gotten over 5,000 scores. How long was like Sopranos running or things like Game of Thrones? Are people I was a while back. Yeah, you know, yeah, some I people would watch it. a daily show. I, might have like a little, I was an MMO player since I've been 16. Yeah. But, but I mean, I put it down for weeks. I don't have to be in every day. I mean, I hate to yeah. say this, it's taboo, but like the idea of like a healthy addiction. You know, if it's an outlet and it preoccupies your time and there's no downside to it. Some people exercise and <sighs> can take it too far. Yeah, but it, comes, it becomes a job sometimes. But because I, it's a video game, there's already, oh, it could be an addiction. I was a WoW player. Mm -hmm. uh, World of Warcraft. Yes, awesome. I, it was a job for me. It was a second job for me. Really, you were so. I was a raider. I was had to be the top on the server. God. Had to be, yeah. God. So like dropping it, money on my on. my job. My I went to work. I came home. World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. It was a second job for me. It became the my clan was my group, and I had to be there every day. Got it. So uh, I'm I'm a, uh, you know my my clan is out of India, and I'm pretty dedicated to my clan on Clash of Clans. In case you're watching, but it's not that serious. It's just yeah, a bunch. Of I got that there. serious. So really, you know what I mean? That's interesting. So, um, so online games are, well, in my opinion, fast, the more. Look at the industry that came out of fantasy football. Yes, huge. Holy shit, dude! Huge. <coughs> and Alan, if you're out there, you're phenomenal with the podcast you were doing. It's no disrespect. He's uh, broadcasting a show about fantasy football stats and his presentation. Maybe like, wow. Don't fully grasp it, but like it's like wow. If I watch the show a couple times, I can learn what about fantasy football. Yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Good point. And I don't know anything about fantasy football because I never got into it. You know, and what causes some people are like? How could you never get into games? it? It's like I don't know. I take a look at this. One of the main reasons they become addicted, however, is um, uh, you know, no, like anyone that's trying to make just dropped off because I was knocking fantasy football. <laughs> your ratings. I'm sorry. No, I think How it's because we we're back? 45 minutes. You over. think that's what it is? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Most okay. likely. No, go ahead. Keep really on care, reading. You know? Addiction is social. <laughs> it's socialist. Honestly, it's social. No, it is. And the metaverse is the I ultimate agree, social agree. experience where you go into the metaverse and you go Dude. over here to, like, like you said, uh, Ready Player One, right? Yeah. Wasn't that where it was? Yeah. You but games the are over from here. The social behavior. I would go in my clan group. I was guild leader, clan leaders, and all this stuff. We'd go in and just have a chat. We weren't even playing at the time. We were just talking. And Here's the interesting out. thing, though. I agree. Same kind of clans. I'll go through an hour of conversation. You're but You're talking about games game. you've committed to, right? Yes. Like yep. you were mentioning Ready Player One. Yes. That's already given us a glimpse of it. Yeah. It's already even foreshadowed That's good what some pitfalls could be, you know? Yeah. What happens, like, now what happens to you if the platform goes down? Oh, yeah. You find the other game that can't What do you time? do? Like, how many people are going <laughs> to lose their minds? Well, I play three other video games yes. in case that ever happens. Yep. <laughs> I got backups. I got backup. Yeah. Multiplayer games, God forbid. You know. Always in backup. terms of drugs, that's like, oh, well, yeah, I, not just a heroin addict. I dabble in cocaine and crack, too. You know? I, I like that's, this. That's you know, meth right, on the right, side. Right, just a little bit of this and that. When I can't get crack, yeah. I get meth. I'm good. Exactly. It's like something to keep the high yeah. going, you know, the up and down. The I emotional funny, symptoms of video games, right? Drugs are for people who... Reality is for people who can't handle drugs. <laughs> That's how I view about this. It's like, no, I, I like reality. I don't need drugs. So I like reality. I don't need VR let's or AR. Let's look at the four bullet points. Feelings of I'm restlessness. Not, and I like bringing the tech with me. Yeah. I don't want to be at Niagara Falls with the VR on and be like, what happened to me? Yeah, he fell over. Why? Well, you have AR Why he had to buy something? XR, XR hold up No, I'm just saying, okay. but I got distracted. The <laughs> tech doesn't distract us at all, right? Well, no. AR will bring... Uh, attention back, you'll be less distracted with AR. With a Neuralink, maybe, but are you going to be able to use AR while you drive? Yeah, that's the whole point. The, the Apple glasses, you drive and see the map overlay. Yes. yes. Okay, and when the phone call comes in? Yes. It'll say phone call coming in. Do you want to answer? Mm -hmm. Yes, answer. Yeah, it's Patrick, it's going to be three I'll, hours? I'll maybe. <laughs> I won't have a problem. I'm just worried about driving on the road with the person that has that, and when it goes on, they go... 
<laughs> Let's talk about the symptoms, right? Feeling of restlessness. I've had that from playing games. Been there. Or the glasses Been don't there. work and they're driving in there. <laughs> Uh, uh, glasses. Become irritable. Me too. Like, uh, listen, I, 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 you know, I don't feel good. I am a little irritable because I'm, I'm like, I gotta get through the next board. You yes, know? it's like on your mind constantly. Uh, preoccupation with thoughts, right? Yes, I've had times where I was preoccupied with the conversations in my clan. One hundred percent. I was kicked out of the clan, and I was like really like upset. Like, what the mm. hell? It's like family. I was like <laughs> such a good fighter in that clan. But somebody else became clan leader, and it became an emotional thing. That's because the high, like what a metaverse yeah. would try to accomplish, the high is the, the experience high. of it. It's not just yeah. the game. It's it's the whole, the interaction with even other people. The but I let it, it go. In a way, it kind of keeps our minds yeah. preoccupied. Over time. It, it, Over time. Okay. But I guess I will say my preoccupation with Clash of Clans showed slight signs of addiction. Is it possible? Yeah. That? Well, that's the next part that you're getting into the physical Lying symptoms. to friends. I lied to friends. I said, I'm sick. No, I want the Hey, I'm not balance. coming out tonight. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Yeah. Meanwhile, it was like four screens. And I'm Dude, like, the monitors are lined up. And, you know, yeah. and the coffee. I'm fine. <laughs> Mountain I'm Dew. And <laughs> I know. Now, the next day I could prove it. Look, I feel I look so shitty. I haven't slept. Yeah, you could just you yeah. Yeah. Not you're sick because you're up all You I gave for 18 hours well, straight. done music production <laughs> yes, digitally, same. right? And it's like, like... To the point where your ears bleed, yes. and then you look and you see it's sunlight out. And <laughs> like, how did I just stare at a monitor yes, for 12 yeah. hours? It's like, like oh, well, it's I was boring. EQing <laughs> one sound. It's like, why? Because it's composed within all this, and what you didn't realize is throughout the night, your perspective changed, and the sound changed, and the next day you listen to it, and you're yeah. like, what was that? I, I will say that the final bullet point is what kept me away from the addiction. Isolation from others in order to spend more time gaming. You'd come over. My other crazy friends would come over and we'd do that together for hours. We'd do it together or I'd just <laughs> I hate people in general, so I actually didn't mind avoiding people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always had friends. We I did that in groups. Like, yeah, we'd stay up all night like, like, and be like, Ed, sun just came out. Like, God damn, mm -hmm. again! <laughs> you know? And like running, I remember one track, 500 takes on the solo over and over. You and I were there until 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, one day. yeah. You know, and yeah, exactly. Uh, your eyes, your eyes group. are like you can feel it, but you're like you don't register it because your your brain is like you're linked. Do you know what I mean? But, but without right, yeah. without having that distraction, which is good for fully submersive, but it's like how do you unplug? You would almost need a, a reminder, and like it would be like yeah, like the Patrick, lights going off when it turns off. Like wait, where am I? <laughs> what was, right, but what was I'm happening back in reality? You know, I know people were having problems adjusting to the uh, the spatial the, the uh, mental picture of the space when they put it on and they're taking it off. Yes. That's weird in terms of the perspective of like reaching for something and okay, I had a friend that went deep years ago into coding and uh, he was one of the people that became fluent in it where he was dreaming in code. Wow. That's sick to dream code. Yeah, but he had uh, sleep deprivation, mm. jet lag one time. Okay. And he was drinking at an airport in Germany. The flight was delayed, and then he didn't realize how long it was delayed. Okay. And he was afraid of flying, so he was drinking on the flight and didn't realize he had been drinking for like six hours. Didn't realize. All right. I'd be no, because he, had, he had jet lag. Oh, He used God. to go. He went into. He was flying around because he was okay. in tech. Okay. He was yes. flying in to, to set up a network sure. or something, sure. and then had jet lag already. Never recovered from it. Uh, uh, yeah. And then basically had a, a neurological breakdown to the point where he was like couldn't function as a person anymore because he was so so sleep deprived if you want to look that up it's basically like jet lag uh, symptoms yeah gone. but it triggered him to the point where he started speaking in binary wow wow like From his like dreams a, was he was seeing he was he was we saw him he we he came back to my house we were having a party that night uh we had a lot of djs that were flown in yeah and we caught him walking down the road and he was asking how to get to the airport because he needed to get back. And then he was slipping into code going, zero, one, 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 zero. It's like, no, 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 dude. You know, I knew he had told me already he was dreaming. And, yes. But he would just, like, he almost like, excuse me, but autistically, like, go completely into code. Sure, sure. Like, and it was almost like, and I mean, he ripped into code. Mm. He was so sleep deprived, it was like a dream state. But when he went into the code, he was literally, if you will, seeing the matrix. Wow. Because his brain was processing that fast, but he processed faster in terms of code mm. than he could in terms of communicating with somebody. So when his guard slipped, he went into code. Right, but because of his sleep deprivation, he was confused. This wasn't a conscious thing. It was no, it was the ultimate. Sort of accident, the, if you the, will. 
the apex of it because it had started to the point where he was fluent in it and he was dreaming in it and he was telling yeah. us that and we're like to the jet lag to, I, I wanna, I wanna make it to the point where it affected his reality yeah. though yep I, I just want to he was lost thinking he was somewhere else because he was not seeing trees he was kind of translating you were seeing numbers trees. and yeah, yeah. let me back out of this rabbit hole for a moment because the isolation from others and i said that you'd come over i do this with friends we do it together right um I think that when you and I were together in my studio, we'd look at each other, you, we would talk, it became a hangout session. Yeah. When my friend, my, my kids or my son get together with their friends, they're on their iPads not talking to the other. Just because they're in the room together, it's still isolationism. When you and I did this stuff till four o'clock in the morning, we were talking. You'd yell at me, right? But, but you know, go back like to the beginning, like social interaction. We saw every evolution of the home gaming platform, Pong, every yeah. console. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man. Well, everyone that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not 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 everyone, but everyone that was you know, Pong was like a holdover. Like yes. it's like what's right. that? And it was still kind of cool as you know, almost like playing a, a pinball game. You know what I mean? Every game has its fun, but it's almost like we kind of outgrew certain parts to it. We're using it now. We can produce digitally. It's like, it's almost like got away from the game because it's like, oh, it's a cool song. I remember in college, uh, it might have been Sega, Sony, yeah, yeah, uh, with a CD player, but it was one of the games, like one of the beginning Grand Theft Auto, where you could put your own soundtrack in. Mm, okay. And my friend was a DJ. So we used to have events in his room and game for hours where mm. multiple DJs would DJ live into oh, the game and sick. play through the gaming platform because you could. So now I've been in. in the metaverse. Um, and I forgot now I'd have to download it or search. have it in a cloud. They do that in the they do that in the metaverse. Yeah, but you right. can't play the way we did. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where it was yeah. like you're waiting there anyway. It's almost like that inspired creativity. Mm. Otherwise, it's everybody playing, so it's taking everybody out of like. I mean, like we sat in the room, like you said, okay, and we used these things. I mean, there was a computer in front of us almost probably at all time. Even we when you picked up a guitar, so there was a computer there. Yes. But you picked up a guitar. It was like, okay, use this now. Digitally, I can even like virtually have a keyboard. Yes, we were using analog instruments to record into this digital world. Which is great yeah. if I can't afford a account. piano, but to go there and virtually play it. And then you can have some kind of like gloves like we've seen in... Yeah. You know, Ready Player One, that'll give you the tactile feel. That's why I said, why not just beam it into your brain? Why not just Wi-Fi? Because, it? because I like, believe that the, the, the interaction with that product will eventually have too many problems. I still think yes. a suit is the ultimate thing that has body and, and eyes. Right, but in shopping, why are like big box stores open that operate at a loss? Because people still want to go see the thing and touch it. I agree. Then they might buy it online. It's, it's a lot of tech. Because we don't want to lose our humanity, too. which I think. That which is interesting because like tech stores experience that. It's like people go in and look, browse, you know, and then go buy it online, and that's tech. That could be a computer. It's like they're checking the feel, and like mm -hmm. oh, because if they don't, it's like they didn't know the screen was that big, or oh, it's it doesn't. They got to touch right. it a little bit, but then get the best price. Sure, I, I do that every. It's time. it's almost I as much time, as man. there are ways to like stimulate the brain in terms of like oh, I like this. Touch and feel is also one of them. So that's why I was saying, like, how do you get the synthetic hallucinogen to adapt to the point where you've separated from your body? Mm -hmm. Because this is all mental that you're perceiving, you're, you're allowed to perceive that it's an, a virtual or augmented reality. Do you that would think be, a, like, in terms of psych, do you understand what that is? Yeah. So you're departing from actual known reality and assuming the virtual or augmented one is your new world and it's yes, real. Correct. Your body will perceive that like a prosthetic why do you leave it then uh, how do you leave it a you clock a you don't why you would don't, you want you to don't if really it's leave you, it. Don't. you don't leave it why that becomes your life yes it becomes your life and then the more that's in there there's less of a need mm -hmm. i think i'll go eat something well like i mean let, that was another movie with people that were uh hooked up into ai intelligence where they had like skins if you will mm -hmm. the person that's fed by tubes and just gets to plug in well, not only that, but it's ultimately going to remove natural things that are now being replaced with the computer, yeah. right? So yeah, it's supposed to be an enhancement, you know what I mean? An enhancement, but you're going to be thinking and showing things that are Watch this, in terms of reality, content, You'll what's your different. content going to be like? In other words, the videos we see, there's gaming videos are popular. It's popular to have some guy stand there, or it's popular to have people watch this. But the most popular video is going to be some guy like hang gliding off of Everest 
or you know what I mean? Someone doing, doing something doing, natural. Anyways. Yeah, or a kitten. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, Everybody yeah, sees yeah, it like, yeah. oh, I want to pet the kitten, but yeah. it's like, yeah. Yeah. oh, I'll order a kitten. It's like, oh, that's not the kitten. Or the delivery drone like got confused, and it's like the kitten was yeah. delivered six months ago and arrived today. Um, I think we apologize. Uh, just return the no, parcel there's, there's with, there's with the kit, with the remains of the kitten. Drop back the and we'll, box and we'll, we'll credit your it. account. We have a long way to go before all this technology works. Definitely. They're talking. Yeah, about I'm the sorry universe. to be so cynical, right? They're I'd love to see this advancement we, we just did will allow for this in the future. Yeah. And we're working on this, like in other words. Look, but they're talking about Mars. They're talking about the the James Webb Telescope. Yet we can't even get our governments to give us the real data. About we what's can't land on the moon. Yeah, right. And you again, when they, <laughs> when they roll this <laughs> out, so are they going to have the lobbyists because they're going to need the FCC regulations to allow for yes. whatever they're doing? And well, and look, we as population, we as, as citizens, have to accept the fact that NASA told us all of the data from the Apollo missions is completely gone, unrecoverable. Oh well, sorry. Really. You know what but I mean? They're planning on going up in like eight years, right? Yeah. So it's it's uh, with a lot of advanced technology, but meanwhile we can't even get out our own way. About it. Towns get That's the problem with it. It's like we're being forced. It's almost stuff forcing us profit. backwards in terms of tech. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like the old saying, it's like nobody knows how to fix stuff no more or make stuff. Yeah. yeah no, really, they don't. Yeah, it's true. Because that was Joe Rogan joke. He, yeah. You know, they call the smart people left the planet and just didn't tell anybody. It's Guys, like, it's we've like been talking and beating like this to death. <laughs> We're going to end the show. Thank you for joining Cyber Masters if you made it this long. Um, a lot of great information. I'll share those links again to the information that I pulled up. And uh, send us messages. We'd love to hear more. And uh, hopefully all these gentlemen back in the next uh, couple months. Thank you very much. And have a lovely, lovely evening. Thank you, guys.